I see you on YouTube. I see frames. Yep. Oh, that's me. I have volume on. <clears throat> but I already have a lag. No, not pause. So, ah. There we go. That is now muted. All right. That looks like we've accomplished it. Oh, that's on the other screen. I'm selecting all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, kind and gentle folk. How are we doing today? Everybody have a good weekend? Have a good week? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did a lot of grilling. That sounds nice. Yeah. Holy Hannah. Oh, that's a... Sounds like bot. Yay, bot. Wow, we went from 40 to 19 people just like that. <laughs> That's a bear meme. Is it? Bye. <laughs> bye bye. What's funny, it stays in the uh, restream chat. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And it'll also stay in YouTube chat, but it's going off Twitch now. Hello, hello, hello. If we can get a check in from people on different. Uh, platforms we will see what's going on tonight we're going to do another night of crits until we're out of crits and then we might sculpt something and fiddle futz around we'll see how it's going but if you have excuse me if you have a file you would like to upload henry will post the link i think it's just zbru dot s h forward slash t s w yeah there we go okay wow now it's really funny so henry is the text coming on so we have oh there's test te that's you testing okay that's me are you seeing the posts there as well yeah i can see them on i have youtube up and twitch up interesting because my restream says there are no, there's nobody watching on any of the channels. <laughs> I see eight on YouTube, 16 on Twitch. Restream. Restream! Yeah, don't get too mad. It'll, it'll quit on us. I know. So oh, we have... Live on Facebook. We have things from Luke. And then who is this one from? Oh, this is from Luke as well. Is Luke here? Did Luke make it yet? Because it looks like Luke took all of the projects from the class that I gave and he want, he's going to have them critiqued now. <laughs> Anyone? Nope. Well, sh I probably should wait for him to get here. He I mean, he just uploaded, so. Uh, I tell you what, I see someone who hello. did submit for crits, who just said hello, Tobias, hey. Hey, guys. Uh, who's here with you? Hello, hello. Hey, Thomas. How are we doing, sir? Pretty good. Yourself? Uh, you know, not bad, honestly. I mean, yeah. I'm a little nappy, but I think I'll get through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day for you, huh? Uh, it's just, it's been a long week. It's just... <laughs> It's just always a struggle. No, it's <laughs> just kidding. No, it's, yeah, but it's going to be a long evening, that's for sure. Oh, I can imagine. It's, a, yeah, it's a, it's 11 p.m. here, but I'm happy to be back. It's been a while since I've, I've been in the crits, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, did yeah, I download uh, your thing, or did you just upload it? Yeah, he uploaded a little while ago, and I assume that you downloaded it. It was in that 1.25 folder. It might be, mm, yeah. It might be that I, 
Oh. Yeah, Tobias Papyrus Eye Rock. Yeah. So okay, there we go. Is, um, yeah, that one. So yeah, right now I'm working on um, some. I want to make three pendants that have symbolism of Egypt. Sure. So the idea was uh, to get the Eye of Ra in there, but I want to add depth, so I was kind of sculpting out an eye. Um, and then adding the details of what the stencil would be like on the left, which was the first try. And then the second try, I was like, it needs more depth. It needs more sculpting sure. into it. Um, so what's giving me issues is the eyebrow part at the top, because when light hits it, it's kind of leaning downwards. It's not going to shine the right way. And as a pendant, it's pretty top heavy if you put it sideways. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of a, a loss of how to approach this now. I like the look from the front, but if you look at the side and all that, it just kind of looks wonky at the top. Well, it doesn't necessarily look wonky at the top. It's just not even, you know, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. just top heavy. So here, let's look at some of these real quick. Let's, which one is this? Boop. Yeah. And then, is that this one? Yeah, I, yeah. I merged that one all together. My apologies. No, no, no. That's fine, actually. that is this eye merged in it as well? Is this part of the same subtool? It, it might be. I think it um, is. Okay. I'm just going to yeah. split this one out real quick. Yeah, just get rid of it. It's fine. All right. It's more like a, a test. So, one of the way is this, is that the ball of the eye here? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's shim this down real quick. I'm just going to take trim front and kill this. Did I suck everything up? No. Okay, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did that. Okay. We'll go to planar and just turn paint off. Just make that flat again. All right. What's our size here? So it's five mil at its thickest, huh? So just the easiest way to kind of balance this out mm -hmm. as far as weight and everything goes, and we are changing the angle of it a bit, but I'm just saying the easiest way of going about this, duplicate mm -hmm. W. And I'm just going to drag this right here, and I'm just going to bring that up. And now trim front. And planar. Okay. And so you can see you've instantly balanced it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it, uh, ooh, my planar, sorry. <laughs> Use my planer brush a little too big there. And so it doesn't change the front too dramatically. And if anything, it actually gives it more of a cheek feeling there as well. Interesting. Yeah. You know, so that changes the front's reflective properties dramatically and it brings the brow up at an angle. So it's actually reflecting out instead of down. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't find this as a bad solution for this, honestly. Um, and then, you know, what's slider subtool? So that's just under four mil thick. So that still could be a little thick. So you can just get straighten that out, come here and just pull it down just a touch. You're only flattening it a little and it's still going yeah. to have most of its reflective depth. Right. Because it didn't really pull those curve indications out or those indication curves like this one. You know, you have this here and that's that little dip, you know, right yeah. here. So by flattening that, you didn't get rid of those. So I think that might be an easy solution for making it more homogenous, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, if you didn't want to do that, you're kind of in a quandary in the sense of, well, where do you put the weight? You know, now you can always just grab this front edge, W, 
and just flatten it a touch. Even just that much will bring, oops, you do have to get the whole surface when you do that though. <laughs> uh, And just even just flattening that a touch you've now brought it below four well that's four two pretty close but then you know you can universally you can make that as thin as you want it right and just flattening that back out you've brought it down to under three mil for the whole thing so all you've done is pulled a lot of that extra weight off yeah. the back now it is still top heavy you know right and that's where, I mean, just as far as balancing, that's your easiest solution is rocking it. Now, if I rock this, see how you have sort of this being anatomical here? And, and then this is just a disc. Uh, are these separate poly groups? Good on you. <laughs> um, Huzzah! <laughs> right? I'm like, hey, look at you go. <laughs> um, this is where you can, you know, think about this breaking into the, you know, ch we do have to hide the part for that to work. <laughs> you know, you could come in and bring this in so it's no longer, you know, you have this imposed anatomy here. If you just right. pull it in and create the bottom edge sort of anatomically, that knocks that. Oh, it's yeah, a. It gives it a smoother feel all around. Yeah, and now when you bring that back in, you know you can have it be. Yeah, that looks nicer. And I would, oops. Let's get these little guys out of here. Uh, divide. Oh, hold on. Let me split it. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is just get rid of the really really sharp creases there because you don't okay. like see how these look like they're hammered right you have nothing right. that's a sharp surface and then all of a sudden the mm -hmm. pupil's just this really crisp punched out shape mm -hmm. and if you just knock that it here let's I'm just making it a little in slightly imperfect split mass yeah. points I'm gonna take these and kind of worn out yeah the, oops, hang on. what's going on with these we're gonna dynamesh these is what we're going to do it's just the simplest solution Shoot. except and we're going to do the same thing here Come in and just bite these edges off. That's, tr that's not what I want. I want to trim dynamic. I'm like, why isn't this not biting how I want it to? Because it's the wrong brush. And at least here, all of your um, details will have the same vocabulary. And yours might be a little softer than this, but I think you'll see where I'm going. Merge down. You see how it just fits a little better in the sense it's not so sharp. Not so sharp. Yeah, it doesn't just look like a cookie cutter. It looks like something that's been sculpted yeah. in and, you know, you can punch, you know, sort of like a reflection detail by putting a notch in it or something. You know, you could play with it just to get it in the same vocabulary. Yeah, play with the details a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. 
And because that's the top eyelid, I would do that to the bottom. Okay. Right? You know, just so your eye, it, you know, that is the eye of a horse. So the bottom yeah. is part of that design element for sure. Okay. So I think I would probably do that in the same sort of style. Yeah, you're right. I missed that part. And if that's the case, I would bring that detail up some too. Are these different palm groups? I think they are, but just checking. Yeah. Bring up the detail in um, the upper? Yeah, just, the upper lid? just this just being a little thicker. Okay. Just so it, because once again, you've kind of, or this is what it looks like to me. You've taken the eye of horse and overlaid it onto an anatomical yeah. substructure. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do, yeah. And so you don't want to get anemic on the top edge there because if it is the eye of horse that is being overlaid, then you know it's got to stand in its own right without that anatomy. And let's take a look at it without the anatomy. Yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty close, wouldn't you say? I mean, if you're just thinking, yeah. you know, look at this shape, you know, I would have that shape on the anatomy. I, I tried it, but I didn't like the look entirely because I I don't know the, the when when the upper and bottom uh, were connected, it felt like I was missing a bit of the anatomical part which I was oh I don't for, I don't mind them being like separate oh yeah yeah I, I don't yeah. mind them being separate but I just want to see a little bit more of that identifier I just think that right it alone I think just where you had this top brow just got a little thin in here where mm -hmm. it became anemic on the front end I just think that yeah, yeah, yeah just beefing that up just a touch where it is its own element for sure mm -hmm. you know but no, they don't need to touch. I just think that uh, you're getting a little thin there. Cool. Mm. And just make sure your lines are where you want them. You know, because I had the idea of possibly I'm not sure how I would do this. I'd probably find somebody. But could you electroplate silver to be gold plated if I were to cast oh, of this? Of course, you can plate it in silver. Smart. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking of um, the the dominant areas of the actual shape of of the of the the symbol of Horus would be highlighted in mm -hmm. gold and then the rest would be silver. Oh without a doubt. I think that would add a, a nice touch. Oh yeah. No, you can either mask it and plate it or it can be pen plated. You know, just where mm -hmm. you do it with the little felt tip electroplatey doogie. Yeah. So I think that's probably your best bet for um, thickening it or balancing it is rotating it. Yeah. That brightens up the entire brow. And um, it gives you a cheek structure, and it allows you to kind of get a more full, rounded anatomical feel underneath the eye. Mm. Yeah, this, the cheek kind of pops up a bit more. It shines. Yeah. And it yeah. distinctly balances the weight, for sure. Ooh, I'm glad it wasn't a huge change. Thank God. Nope. <laughs> Just rock it and saw it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally. I was looking at, at it in the front the whole time. I was like, oh, the Ansel's in the pack. Silly me. <laughs> and I mean, what's really funny is, I mean, this is this is the first one, right? I mean, if you... Uh, I think this one, you squish it a bit. Oh. This version. Yeah, hold on. Look. You know, that's your first one. Yeah. And then the change really isn't that dramatic. No, it isn't. And I mean, I can make it that thick again. You know, we can bring that back 
back to this thick. I kind of like the shape like that with uh, yeah, it diagonal yeah. kind of triangular shape at the bottom. It gives it, yeah, gives it nice character as a mm -hmm. It gives you a lot more reflective surfaces too, you know, because yeah. now you have like this V that's reflecting with motion as opposed to a flat in a brow. Yeah, you're right. So it becomes a much more dynamic surface. Right, see how flat this is? See, that's just going to yeah. reflect as one plane, and then that's going to reflect basically as one plane, right? Where if you get in and come to here, see how much more dynamic it is very quickly. Oh, yeah. Way yeah. better. That's not the silver I want. Oh, there it is. That's a little bit easier to see. Compared to this. Yeah. Nope, that's an easy fix. Easy. Easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Of course. Yeah, no, so... You know, when you start doing this stuff, just remember, just think in light, you know, how is this going to look? Mm. Throw one of those highly reflective materials on it. You know, that bright gold does really well in the sense of showing you where your flat planes are. You know, yeah. I mean, just look at how that's reflecting, right? You know, you have some complexity there, but this is all just one flat reflective plane. Boop. Yeah. I mean, just instantly, there's just a lot more going on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. It, isn't cool. That's... I'll refine those touches. Yeah. And then, you know, you can come in and even give it a little bit more in there if you want. But mm -hmm. I think just tilting and knocking that edge off really does a world of good for it. Yeah. Also, um, for for loops like uh, hoops at the top of, of your pendants um, do you prefer having it as a, uh, a a loop facing uh, horizontal or or well I guess it's hard I'll tell you with a bail or without a bail like would you prefer some uh, a pendant with a bail fully attached or the other way around so you can attach a bill onto the loop yeah see i'm i'm a like i'm pendants and stuff i'm such an anti bail person because you know you spend all this time and energy to sculpt something that's a nice composed form and then you throw this like half round on it that doesn't belong you know a big half round here just yeah, exactly. mangles it what i would probably try to do is kind of what i did with those college um, or the university pendants. Let me see if we can do that here. All right, let's give it a little bit more thickness. Okay. Okay. Stretch that out. And now I'm going to trim front. How much did I try? Okay. Maybe that's not. Hey, Tomas, define half round real quick. Define half round? Yeah. Yeah, you keep saying half round. Things are half round. What do you mean? In, in what context? When did I say half round? Um, I think in this case you said it uh, when you were talking about not having a sort of jump oh, ring oh, oh, attached oh. to the top of so it. So all I'm saying is that, so if you attach jump rings to this, um, where's the pond? The pond. Sorry, 
Donc ça serait que... So let's say that should jump in. I want to see you. Okay. So the problem, or what I view as an issue, is if you just attach a bale to this, you just have these, and this is what I mean by half round. You just have these like okay. these big pokey things just sticking off the top, right? And it's just like, all right. And then you're like, if you put it in this way, it's like, okay. And you know, it has nothing to do with the design for the most part, Not right? At all. And so this is my issue with um, pendants and bales. I think they're horrible. Because, I mean, I, I can design it where that's in it, but, you know, so much of this is that it is a circle. It is, you know, I mean, that's so much of the symbolism and blah, 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 blah. Well, one of the solutions I found when we were doing these um, university pendants, because I didn't want um, there to just be you know, these things just stapled onto them. You know, these are people's logos. They're attached, you know, the the gator. And then you see this like half round coming out of its forehead, you know, it's like, uh, eh, not really my thing. So uh, for me, it does. <laughs> and so what I did for those is I created a cutter that cut a hole in the, f let's mask that, right. that sort of cut a hole like this out of it. And it had a okay. slightly thicker top because I wanted a little bit of, right, it had like a little beefiness right here. And then I created a cutter that removed this here and this here. And then the chain went through, your bale was recessed into the surface, basically. And so your holes there, and these just became nice little transitions. And then it goes through there. And then you have your chain going through the pendant, but from the front, it looks like it's the round, and then you have and now obviously this is way too fat. Come on. Oh, get it lower. So what you do with this method, you would have to know the exact size of your chain that you'd be. Uh, so I would probably make it um, like a three millimeter hole. Because most chains are going to be in that one to three range. I mean, how big? This isn't very big, is it? Well, it's 14 mil. Oh. So, I mean, oh. it's not small. You know, it's. Yeah, I don't think I've exactly decided what size I want right. it to be. So, yeah. And so, um, I think on those chains, on the college or the university icon, or what do you call them? Mascots and their licensed, you know, university, yeah. whatever you call them. Um, I think we did a three millimeter hole. And so you could get a, you know, a, a feminine chain as well as something a little thicker, more robust. Um, but, you know, I, I like, that look a little better. Yeah. Right. I mean, I find that more compelling. And that's me. You know, it's one of my pet peeves is I hate just 
look, I have this great design. Eh, let's slap a circle on it. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> Somebody yeah, you're kind of ruining the whole thing. Yeah, it's a this lovely, nice, simple, beautiful form. It's a circle. It has an eye in it. That it's like, <laughs> why'd you put a bowler hat on that eye? You know. It's like <laughs> so, I would maybe look into doing something like that. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll apply that concept. And you know, you can make this as big as you want in the sense of if you have a four millimeter chain, you know, you can just bring it straight back to be more. And if you do that, it, cause we did that with a lot of the William Henry stuff where we hid the bales um, behind it like this. And so I eventually adopted something that um, was a little bit more like this, where it came all the way up and we knocked it out behind. You know, we hollowed this out quite a bit. That is not clay tubes. You know, we hollowed this out quite a bit. But this started to become a form. And why we did it in such a long, nice, smooth pattern is you got to remember that this is going to be sitting on the chest. And so you don't want anything poking out too far. So by making it a nice flat, you know, that's something that'll lie against the chest and not be just one little point that's poking it spreads that weight out and you could yeah. see you could put a five millimeter hole there if you wanted you know Easy. yeah so on something like this that is such a nice form i would try to pull it out the back somehow and you know you can make this decorative where it does something like that and it's hollow here you know but at least from the front you're carrying that circle, the eye in the circle motif a little farther. Cool. Yep, I think that's what I would do. Sweet. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Especially with like the primitive designs or the or the basic designs, you know, where there's not a lot going on and it is that eyeball sitting on that reflective plane. I think throwing another loop in there would just be distracting. Yeah, a pendant's a pendant. It shouldn't have any other shapes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like I said, you can design a pendant where the bale is there and it's tied into the form, but this is a very basic form and I just think you'll be better off hiding the bale. Yeah. yeah, that's my absolutely. story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so is this the only piece in there, or were you looking at other pieces? No, that was just it flat. That's the, right? that's the rest yeah. of my pieces. Yeah, it was just the, the other one there that was more of like a stencil, which I mm -hmm. first tried, but uh, no, that was just Yeah, no, way. I think this is a much more interesting so, part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without awesome. a doubt. Just knock that out. Well, you really helped me out here. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I kind of like that. Almost looks like a coin, like the old stamped coins. Yeah, the next uh, symbol I want to do is uh, uh, mm -hmm. a scarab. And I'm still deciding on the third one, but it will be a three part series, which I, I don't want to sure. cast out. I really. Uh, after I listened to this book and they were talking about Triptolemy, which was uh, a Greek god who supposedly, well, he was a messenger for the gods. He was the god who was supposed to spread agriculture. It, he had this like little wagon that had these two dragons and all this stuff. You're just like, yeah, no wonder they called you Triptolemy, dude. You are a trip. It's, it's a great <laughs> image. I was just like, yeah. And they have all these coins of him and stuff. And I was just like, I really need to do a trip to Holland. Yeah, That's he's cool. cool. I like him a lot. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Holding grain, you know. Yeah, two dragons and a thing of grain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too. Hold on. Look at this dude. He's great. That's mad scary. Uh, Those poor farmers. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, yeah, you're really inspiring, you lunatic. <laughs> Terrorizing farmers with fire-breathing dragons. 
Oh, Triptolemus. There you go. Look at this dude. Hey, learn how to farm or else. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> you lunatic. Oh, what? Oh, oh yeah, I know. Oh, no. He's on fire, man. His little cart. That's a go kart you really want. <laughs> Wings, snakes, everybody. I mean, that's that's a that's a full ride right there. I mean, he was he had a pimp ride before pimp rides were pimp rides, right? <laughs> wow, well, pretty awesome. I design. know. I was like, hell yeah, that's the guy I want to hang out with. with the wings yeah. And wheels. <laughs> he was not kidding, man. But they have some great coins. He's got oh yeah, these two, yeah. Look at these guys, right? I mean, homie's on fire. I know. Oh, cool. I, I thought he was great. I was like, oh, I should grab a coin. The cheapest one I saw was like seven hundred bucks. I was like, I don't need that coin so much. <laughs> there's um, I don't know if you you probably know on Etsy. There's somebody that creates kind of pendants out of uh, wax. Oh towns. yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just like this This person has a whole collection of like wax stamps from from royalty sure. and uh, from different parts of, I guess, from their collection uh -huh. in Europe. And what they do is they use those those wax stamps as uh, as 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 cast. As yeah. And they use them as. Them. Yeah. yeah them no, as that's results. awesome. Yeah, yeah, and they come out really Yeah, when nice. I was looking at the Triptolemus stuff, um, there's a generation of coins. Hold on, let me see if uh, Greek stamped coins. There, I can't think of the word for it. Um, and they would just they have these like four claw marks in the back from yeah it's sort of like this one like these where they literally just took like a little nugget rolled it up and stamped it and i can't i can't That's think of cool. what they're what they're called but there's some really cool ones um right because they're very primitive you just take a ball of metal and stamp them Ooh. did yeah. they just did everything just crash on me no um, come on here we go. right there's a lot of this and you can see it's just a square stamp and it's funny because they use the on the back they use like a four prong thing so it would press into the into the little mold or into the stamp evenly but there's some really yeah. cool ones of these because you can tell that they just you know made a blob of metal and then just hammered it, it there's just something really unique and very visceral about them right you're like no yeah absolutely yeah like see here they even have a pattern on the stamp and then they knocked it into the mold on yeah here's another see that's the like this the mold make or the stamp mark right so they knew where or who stamped it but it's sort of just this weird like little pushy thing but they're pushing it into these really cool little molds it's quite satisfying isn't to it? See it i, I don't um, like a shape being pressed into metal where it's almost like it, it's yeah like exactly but it's so solid that you, but you can still see the shapes of where it has pressure and where it's like gotten soft yeah the edges. no i i i find this very sad you're right it's satisfying that's i don't know it's just great you know because mm -hmm. some of these are ornate and super beautiful and it's still just this oh this lumpy stamp and you see the edges <laughs> of the coin and stuff i mean you know I think these would make beautiful pendants and just like ring sets so yeah. on the underside you're seeing the stamp mark and then you know so this is who stamped it and then that's the symbol right because you can see this is stamped yeah. by the same town city whatever Argos I guess so it's probably a city stamp so that's the city issuing the coin and then this is the symbol on the coin and I just, I like this as a solution. You know what I mean? I mean, like, this one's cool, right? <laughs> you know, this is a beautiful carving. And that's whatever your city stamp is. And then you just have this lump. You're like, all right, give me that one. All right, Henry, here. <laughs> you know, here we're <laughs> melt it down. <laughs> you know, it, I don't, there's just something very gratifying to me about these. I, I think, 
Mm-hmm. The imperfections are, are, are lovely. Yeah, and you know, not one of them's the same. That's the other thing that's just awesome. You know, it's just a lump yeah, that they exactly. stamp. And I really want to start exploring some die stamping. Um, and I think that my first die stamp experience, experiments would be something like this, where you have these two random, um, you know, your positive and your Blobs. stamp, and then you just get... You know, take X amount of metal, melt it into the ball, hit it, melt it in the ball, hit it, and just, yeah, I don't know. That's a. Yeah, that'd be super fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just cool stuff. Because, I mean, what's crazy, you know, these are beautiful carvings, you know. And that's, what, 2,400 years old? So, you know, that was crisp and sharp when they did it. I love this stuff. These guys were on one. I mean, look at the detail in that horse's face. You, you know, what is that? 2,400 years old? Yeah, yeah it's, it's really crazy impressive. talk. <laughs> like, that's just <laughs> madness. Yeah, there's... A good sculpt. Yeah, last. it's crazy. I mean, you know, these were, these were, you know, commerce, and they still held up this well after 2,000 years. That's just outrageous. You know these things had to be just stunning when they were made. Because mm. I'll tell you what, I have a hard time having detail hold up more than a week, let alone 2,200 <laughs> years. Uh, yeah. Kind of off on a tangent, but... It, this is the feeling that I'm having from your sculpt, or this is when I saw that. This is the kind of stuff yeah, that I glad. had in my mind, where, you know, sort of those bumpy. <laughs> take that all the way to the edges, you know, get it into this world. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little more bulbous and maybe round it out, or work. Yeah. 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 I'll play with that. Because I think. Whoa! What did? Oh, did I just resize all subtools? Yeah. Way to go, Tomas. I think I need to just remove resize all from my little thing here because it's one of the most annoying buttons in ZBrush. Because now it's just resized all those subtools. And you're like, oh, I'll just push undo, right? Well, no, you got to go to each subtool and undo all those. Uh, yeah, so keep all off. All's dangerous. <laughs> Everyone, that all button is dangerous. And I don't know how to... We've been trying to get a way to save it where off is the default, and I've yet to find a way to do that. Con. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. Yep. Indeed, indeed. Cool. Well, I'm gonna right on. sign off. Let you critique other people. It's cool, cool. Forty here. But, of course. Uh, Anytime. A lot, Thomas. I'm here every Monday. The help. And on Discord. Are you part of Discord now? Sweet. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's talking Discord. to you. Good point. I changed my, uh, I changed my name to Tobias from Pinky Toe, so <laughs> I don't know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, Pinky Toe yeah. Tobias. <laughs> That's a good one. Good. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Have All a right. good one. Have a good one, guys. Have All a good one. Right. So, um, do I have an art station? Let's move on to oh. Luke, who Twitch tells me is watching this stream, um, but they are not in the Discord, and I haven't seen them respond yet. Luke, so, are you here? Um, maybe they're here. Maybe not. Twitch lies sometimes. I'm going to actually drink sugar and caffeine because I'm tired. Oh, no. I don't really drink soda, so it's a very effective um, caffeine and sugar boost. Is there another Pixo streamer that's been doing jewelry? I don't think so. That would be the first I've heard of it, uh, though we, we should probably know that. The chat says there was, but they don't. On Pixo? It. Or just on YouTube? On Pixo. I know there are a few YouTubers, but... Not that I know on Pixo. 
They said it was definitely this hmm. channel. I wonder who that could be. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the schedule for. Was today it today? To figure it out. Is that what they said? Uh, huh. I think so. That's, that's really interesting. I mean, you know, maybe Ash or somebody was making a piece of jewelry or something like that. You know, I could see. Yeah, they. Certainly yeah, I, all I can, can see a female streamer making a piece of jewelry, but I don't think that there's anyone else streaming streaming jewelry. But I mean. I would assume they would have told me. I mean, not like it's a big deal. I mean, you know, it's just. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. great, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's just not going to happen. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. If, if you could tell me what day it is, that'd be super easy to find out who it was. All right. Monday. It was today? Well, you just... You just asked what day it is? I'm telling you. No, I know what day it is now. I'm saying what day the, sh the female streamer who was doing jewelry was on. Or is that what you were saying? That's Monday. <laughs> I was just making a joke. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking for real solutions on things. You know, there I go. You know, being practical. Yeah, I don't specialize in those. Or I really, I don't specialize in jokes either. That's true. Clearly, <laughs> now, the only other streamer from today. Was, yeah. Is that Pablo? Yeah, Pablo. Oh, and Shane. <laughs> well, well. You may be joking, but that's probably 80% of zebra streamers. <laughs> I'm going to guess Ash. <laughs> that's my yeah. guess. Anna was on recently, um, but it looks like she was sculpting a, a vase. Too. Yeah. Well, in some ways, we could just jump to Luke, but at the same time, he has so many things. I'm wondering if we should wait for him. No, I think you should start at the top. Okay. It's, it's all point. recorded. Boop. Boop. But we have a, a special request from from our buddy. Not right, 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 right. Yet. Yoga pug. <laughs> Yoga pug. Okay. So. Trying to see if there's a title or a description. Yeah. I'm assuming it's a pendant because there's the bail. Yeah, it's an appendant. See, speaking of hiding your bales, good job, Luke. Hide that bail. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Uh, the only so on the back side, just. Practical issues first on the back side. I think that this edge might be a little hostile. Uh, just in it becoming just the circle that's going to sit on your chest. And if someone thumps it, it's going to do a cookie cutter of your sternum meat. Because um, that's not very thick. So that's going to become something a bit more like a blade. So I think that I would try to... Let me, where are my brushes? I'm kind of trying to get this edge to blend in with these a little. So you're getting rid of a little bit of your cookie cutter and you're spreading that um, surface out just a little bit of a, you know, a touch more. Uh, right, because see now that's not just this little edge blade, it has other meats in there that are going to allow that to ride on the body and not be so hostile. Okay, that's a 
into the field. Then. So that's the first thing. Try to make the back a little smoother. You may even want to go as far as thickening this up the top. Come on, why are you not selecting? There we go. Giving this a wee bit of um, like a rounded off edge. Making that just a touch thicker and oh, a little symmetry on, sorry. But just getting that to blend in a little more and just be a little softer, this edge a little softer. And I think that'll help you some. Add a little bit of weight, but um, at wearability wise, I think that'll make a big difference. On the front, you see that these are kind of stone sets. And you're right, I wouldn't do too much with them because what they'll probably do is just take a grave or push it in here and push the two lips over. They'll probably raise their own beads to do settings like that. I just want to know, and I kind of see it, but this one right here throws me for a loop. So what you have, hold on, first of all, let's turn off symmetry. You have these internal parts that have this sort of ridge. You have a sharp ridge area, right? And then it looks like a soft edge with a ball frame. Now this is coming from the inside, right? It looks like one of these elements and it's breaking this frame. But this doesn't have a raised ridge element. Right, this isn't Right, because see how these have this ridge, these have this ridge. This doesn't have a ridge because it's that feathery or the out, it's the outline of the form. So I'm just curious about this part right here because it doesn't tie into anything in the sense of, here, let's go to this, let me go to paint. Oh, let's go to oh, hold on. that's not going to do any good we need to go to color fill object and now I'm going to come in Let's make the balls blue, just so they're a different color, because they are a distinctive part of a different vocabulary. So we're going to take that, go fill color, okay, and now let's come back up to this guy. And so now, I'm going to go to red, and I am just going to paint this. So design-wise, these are sort of the groups that I'm seeing. These are soft and have no architectural ridging. They do have stones, but it's not, you know, you're not putting this lip in here. So now when we start to break it up and looking at it like this, hopefully it's a little more clear that this guy and this guy don't really tie into what's happening, right? Because you have, this is outside of the red loop. This is going outside of the red loop. Now this one didn't, I put this ridge in here, but this one didn't have the ridge and this one didn't have the ridge. So these two don't relate to the interiors of these, right? Let's do green real quick. So these are all forms that have this ridge and are inside the red frame. 
ridges inside the red frame. Ridges inside the red frame. Uh, hot pink. Uh, I guess that reads more purple. But you can see that these two are not inside the red frame, though they have ridges. And this guy doesn't have a ridge, but he's inside the red frame. And this guy didn't have a ridge and is inside the red frame. So if we break it out in colors, you can see that there are a couple of questions about you've sort of established some rules, but then you broke them. You didn't carry through with them. So I want to know why these two purple things are different and why these two like aqua pale aqua blue are different because this is a pretty distinct vocabulary no detail encapsulate encapsulating the green florally ridgy things with ridges and then here this one crosses over that one eh, that doesn't necessarily bother me but it doesn't happen anywhere else, right? So, you know, once again, you're, you're establishing these design rules and I wanna know why you're breaking them. So you have, stop that, go away. You, okay. So we have one, two, three, four, I'll give you four and a half. Little areas that I don't understand. So it's an interesting vocabulary. You've started to issue some design rules, but then you break them in a few places. And if you have a reason for them to break, great but you need to understand that you're breaking them and I want an answer why you're breaking them. But other than that, it's an, you know, it's an interesting form. I'm sure it can be really attractive. I just wanna know why you're making and breaking rules. All right. To the lily. Why is this a dumb color? Because I made it a dumb color. Okay. So you're so, you know, this edge tension is good. Um, this, I mean, I'm sure you can find one that has this, but this wouldn't be that sharp right there. This would. You still have tension here. This isn't a, um, you know, there isn't actually a fold here. This is an open, even that edge is created by the surface tensions of the leaf, right? Or of the petal. So here is, um, You know, I would fill this in so this becomes a more logical shape with the uh, what's actually going on. Let's see. Hmm, Twenty is way too strong. Smooth stronger is not turned on. Right, and this lip, these waves are caused because it doesn't have enough surface tension to hold that as a ridge. So this is scooping in.
right, so the weight, once again, is this is a tension break, right? It doesn't have enough surface tension to hold that in a sharp edge. So you have to figure out where your gravity of these curves are, right? And so that You see what I mean? These are of a curved surface, and these lips are where that edge is the lack of support of the surface. So, well, right, you want it to feel like it's rolling over. And this is right, but you want this to come in and around too, because this sort of, you know, this is opening. It's not one surface. It is definitely unrolling or unfurling. because that swoop is actually the edge of this part coming inside and swirling around, right? Mm, nope. So that makes a little bit more and since that is the surface that like I said it's bending it's trying to hold that tension you know, that's probably going to do something like that. Yeah. Right, because this edge is actually part of this out here. Right that fold over is because this is coming in and then it's too tall and thin so it's coming over and breaking right it's that surface tension breaking that's creating those rolls so this is that exterior edge of where that surface is breaking up And then that's it rolling back over and under. These are probably coming in a touch more. Because it looks like you have it where this edge is breaking in as opposed to out. But you see how making that rounded I think that's really the edge there that you want to pay attention to this tension edge here but all in all looking good this right that's the cone it's up it can't support its own weight it falls and breaks over. And the pistol is all the way in there. And that's what the pedals are wrapping around.
Yeah, I think you just need to, like in here, just wrap your head around what's actually going on. But other than that, the forms are nice. They have good weight. They have good motion. There's just that breaking edge a little odd and then that tip there. But all in all, looking very good. Next we have... A bracelet, a little cuff. Interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. You may want to define whether there's, this is a nice element in here, and you just have this kind of lumpy surface going on. Right here. Okay, there we go. Is there? Oh, th you have this. This is an array, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, why am I working on this and it's not doing anything? because it's an array. There we go. That's the one we need to be dealing with. Luke has entered the Aha. chat. Ah, hello, Luke. Luke, if you want to talk to him while he's doing your crits, you're welcome to join the Discord if you haven't already. Uh, and you can pop in and be a voice. I just looked up and saw Panda Jerk's question, why do people like the Dirty Blue? So I adopted the Dirty Blue, and then in turn, most of the people I teach um, or who like watch me have adopted it as well. And the point of the Dirty Blue is that in all of my examining of materials, the Ma Dirty Blue allows me while I'm working to get the most realistic um, idea of what details will show up in printing and what won't. So this being a fairly passive color, uh, but the material bake in, like if I see, you know, hold on, let me get little hash marks or something. Where's rake? So if I come in and I'm texturing, like if I see the texture here and you see the highlight and the low light, when I print, it'll feel this way. Where there are other materials that are, um, that are baked in that have, let's see, is there something that's dramatic that I don't? Right here, there's more contrast, so it'll look like something I had one to demo for this, and when I load it uh, 151, I, I guess my materials didn't come over. But because some of these are baked in, it's giving you, see, like if we did this, it would seem like we have very clear, yeah, right? You'd have a lot of texture here, and you know, you'd have very, very clear texture here. These would be very clear. But if we go to Ma Dirty Blue, you know, some of the stuff isn't quite as melodramatic as it, as it would be with another material. So I find that Ma Dirty Blue is the most realistic interpretation of what you're actually going to get out of a printer. So that is why Ma Dirty Blue is used by people who manufacture. All right. Um, And I can look at it for 18 hours a day. That's the, <laughs> like gray, working on gray models 18 hours a day would make me want to throw myself off a small bridge, I think. So Luke, are, are you gonna join us in Discord or have you been watching? I kind of started um, 
a few of your models. Did you see what we had done or where we got to? <laughs> okay, good. Right on. If you have any feedback, just throw it out there. And if you want to join Discord and talk, you can do that too. So like I said, there's not much really to complain about this, you know, in the sense of it sort of looks like a, you know, a stamp into a little organic form. You know, these are going to show up fine. Um, you know, things that I would say, you know, like, I think the only thing that I'd really change about this would I would probably bring hold on let's turn our uh, array off so I can actually work on the model here I mean I might do something where this is a different layer as opposed to just being the same layer um, and that would punch that just a touch and that would allow this to become a different layer. Uh, and instead of just making them cut in, oops, wrong direction. And that would be more reflective as a separate layer as opposed to just being cut in. I think that's the only thing I uh, really see is just like, you know, instead of making these cut in, make them very clearly a layer change instead of just a drawing change. And, they'll become more dynamic reflective surfaces but you know for the I don't see any issues here with this just some preferences I have you know because from afar this starts to get see how it becomes less dynamic because really it's just chattery because it's the one surface that you cut lines into as opposed to creates reflective steps but you know it's interesting it wear well there's no problems with that at all and we have our mon works out nice excuse me too early for that On area. Kind of. So here, the only thing I would suggest, roll this a little bit more so you very clearly get that surface cutting under that surface. And it just gives you a little bit more separation on what's going on in that little area, right? See the difference between that and that? Reflectively speaking, you're going that separates that interior a little. Yeah. The 
only thing Hmm. This pattern is kind of clashing with this pattern visually for me. My eyes want to follow these lines. These lines are sort of like radiating from the center and out. And then you have these steps and they're going very directionally in the opposite direction of the flow of these. So, hold on, let's duplicate. Second. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Give me some geometry there. Honestly, I think I'd probably make my frame simple. You know, maybe do something that has like two faces, maybe. Because you have so much going on in your leaf pattern that when you put a pattern out here, they're competing with one another. Where if you do something like that. Let's just throw a little frame on it and see what that looks like. Look at it reflectively. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have these lines that are very strong and then they're crossing. You have a lot of this dark and white line on this. And it's just competing with this frame. Maybe even go a step farther and just think what is bothering me here so you can see how that's fighting less with the leaf pattern but I think what's bothering me is that the leaves have this very nice negative space and your 
losing it here, here, and here. So we're missing the dynamics of this open space and it's being dragged into a circle. So W, turn symmetry off. Now see how that's really more interesting on your negative space? Right, because you're getting that blade shape as opposed to it being dominated by the circle. See here you lose this sort of nice leafy pattern on the inside and you get this straight line. Where there you're retaining that negative space. So what does that mean for us? What that means for us is maybe this. Let's mark off where that is. And turn that off again. So if we go like this, let's make an internal steep reflective surface. Yeah, I think that um, you may want to change its relationship with that frame because even with even by knocking it down and that will read darker reflectively. It still breaks our open silhouette there. And I think I like that silhouette enough to want it to do that somehow. If that makes any sense. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yep, I think that might be my issue with it. And even that's still weird. See, by putting that many hash marks into the leaves, what you've done is you have made them not solid objects, right? You know, they're... Um, it loses the leafiness of it and it turns very much into this chatter. I'm not saying it's wrong. You know me, I, I love chatter. But we've lost... It's lost the connectivity of the surfaces, I guess you could say. Like, this being hash mark doesn't necessarily tie to these being hash marked this really is separated by its hashing so maybe the issue is let's i'm just going to fill a little bit of this side so these become a little bit more I just want to, I'm not saying that this is a better design. I'm just trying to figure out if this is going to keep my edge continuity. And get that on.
where these two lines at least appear to be a little bit more continuous where this line follows in and becomes that line. Is that going to help any? But do you see how that carries that into that? So now the question is, how do you do that and retain your um, hash detail? <sighs> but do you see how making this smooth actually kicks it off of the surface where if it has all the hash marks it conflicts with this frame it's how to punch the entirety of the leaf design off of that background and right now i'm not i'm not seeing it because there's <laughs> you just scared the living that jeebus so, out of me <laughs> sorry i'm here too uh, I, I have a question somebody asked in Discord that I think really fits into the, the situation you're in right now, and I think it's a really good time to ask it. Um, and it, it might just give you a chance to reflect. A and the question essentially boils down to, how do you know what to do <laughs> when you have no idea what to do? Um, yeah, that's, that's really... Uh, the first thing I would say is do something, right? I know that sounds dumb, but do something and then you can tell if you're heading in the right way or the wrong way. So let's take this for example. This was based off of a mon that I gave the students, right? Um, a mon pattern, which are the Japanese family signs. And so at least here, you had a, a set of basic shapes to start with. And you could see that he really liked the hash mark details. And so the leaves became very visually chaotic. And so my just intrinsic design motifs and seeing what succeeds and doesn't succeed. If you have a busy foreground, you want a plainer background. If you have a busy background, you want a plain foreground. And the contrast is what punches the two objects in metal, okay? So there are a handful of rules, you know. And so here we have a complex foreground. And let's take it back to the beginning so we can actually see it. So you have a complex um, foreground, but you also have a complex background. And if we take just the concept of contrast, right? So now we have a complex foreground with a plain background. Okay, this still has this ridge in it. And that, see these two curves, the curve of the ridge in a circle and the curves of these leaves are not circular, right? It's starting here and going in. So these leaves are folding on one another. So you're like, okay, how do I punch that? Well. I think that this line breaks up the, the interior design. So I'm now sitting there, and so the process I'm kind of trying to work through with them is, um, well, how do we punch the, how do we punch the object off of the background? So when you're saying, how how what do you do when you don't know what to do right so what he did was he chose a complex visual foreground so now that tells us what we need to do with the second step and that is how do we separate this complex 
foreground from a background. Well, <clears throat> I think this, this breaks this line up, right? This chattery, you're following these waves and you're losing sight of this leg of the leaf. And with the circle coming in, I think we lose the shape of that leaf. So that's telling me what my next step is. My next step is how do we make this plane where it will punch the shape of the form, not conflict with it. So I'm pulling the circular edge off or away from this outer curve here. And that's helping some, right? That allows that foreground to separate itself from the background. Right. And how does someone go about learning, I suppose, their personal design vocabulary? Because there aren't really hard set no, rules by no means. you have to follow. But I mean, there is a design vocabulary that well, works anyway. Well, one. But how do you learn it? Keep doing, right? Um, because eventually you're going to be. So, okay, first of all, I've been looking at shapes and forms for 40 years, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've through classes and life drawing and design courses and color theory have this barrage of information in my head. But at a student level, like this is one of my students. This was from one of my classes. Um, we started out with very simple projects and we sort of move through them step by step to other things. And this is the progression of the projects in my class. Um, this was the first project my students had. And why we started here was we had an image and everyone did the exact same thing. That way you're not thinking about your designs. So if you're just very early in your design life and education, I would strongly suggest viewing your design and your s sculpting technique as kind of different things. So why I gave my students this lily as the first assignment is because it fulfilled a few things that I wanted them to learn. The block up was easy, but it had some tricky things like this outside edge isn't just a curve. It's an edge that's there because that leaf petal is very, is very, very thin, right? And so as its internal structure, this supports it, but when it gets out here, it loses its support, so it breaks and it waves. So that outside edge is, you know, like when you take a, um, like a 50 foot uh, tape measure and you put the tape measure out and you keep stringing it out, stringing it out, and then it goes out, 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 and then the surface tension breaks, right? That's as much weight as that half curve can support, you know? And so that's what these curves are for. So for a first project, you had a picture of it, so it was easy, you know, and then I demoed how I did it. Um, but it's very tangible, and you, as a student, don't have to think about the design. You have to think about the mechanics of it. So as a young designer who doesn't necessarily have a, a vocabulary that they, of their own, right? My first suggestion would be copying. Um, and for education purposes only, don't copy and try to sell it as your design. So think about how um, the Renaissance masters and that worked and why things are called masterpieces. Masterpiece didn't mean, oh, look, this was something that everyone should hail. What it was is I was Rembrandt's student. I would copy Rembrandt's paintings until my technique was good enough that I stopped thinking about the painting and started thinking about the content. Now, art's a little different now than it was then because 
you were painting for patrons, so you were painting for the wealthy, or you were painting for the church. End of story. Painting was a business. Painting really wasn't this freeform expression, right? You know, Rembrandt didn't paint because he just loved the Madonna. You know, it's like, no, it's because that's what the church bought, right? So art for art's sake is a fairly contemporary idea in some ways. And so what you have to do is you have to get good at the mechanics and the more the more good you are the better you are at your mechanics you no longer think about how to accomplish stuff and once you're once you stop thinking about how you're going to do it is then when you can start thinking about what you're going to do and why you're going to do it so I would suggest finding a few artists that you like, and that's either, you know, paintings, drawings, you know, doesn't matter, and just start doing, trying to copy things, make a lily. And why that is, is you have something tangible to judge your work against, right? Because if you're going on, and I'm just going to mangle this lily here for a second. right you got you decided you're going to copy a lily and this is what you come up with now this may be what you want it to accomplish this may be a shape and a form that you like but this is a crappy lily right and so if you're trying to and this is what i get from students who were very good at one like let's say are very good at drawing and then they're trying to sculpt and they would turn this in for the lily and they're like yeah but that's what i wanted it to be well you haven't proven to me that you you can actually make a lily right you've made this lily ish thing but that would never pass for a lily especially when i gave you a specific graphic to work from um this sucks right and it might be what you love artistically but you at this point haven't accomplished making a lily and you're just using like a lot of people who are insecure about what they do use their well that's my artistic voice as a excuse not to be able to accomplish the copying or the technical side of it right and you'll hear me say it a lot and that is like if i like i did a thing for 10 hundred that was savage scooter and so he has this little vespa scooter but it's a cartoon it's stylized but what i did is i actually did all my photo research and i created a photo realistic vespa scooter and then i took that model and matched it to his drawing the proportions and the sizes and the shapes to his drawing but that abstraction was based on reality and so i think that when people practice now or when people are trying to learn they've been told all their life that you know their voice matters their opinion matters they matter you know, everything you do is good, everything is great. And you get into the habit, and not you, but people get into the habit of when they're approached with a problem they can't solve, they'll say, oh, well, that's my artistic opinion. And it's a weak way to learn. And it's kind of a weak way to deal with things, you know, because if you have, you know, a photo that you're trying to do of Martin Luther King, and it winds up looking like an exact Lady Gaga, it is the worst sculpture of Martin Luther King in history, right? You know, that, that, that is a lousy Martin Luther King. And it doesn't matter how good a Lady Gaga it is, it's a lousy Martin Luther King. And so in art, there's a real intentionality, right? And you have to be able to accomplish the things that are in your head 
And so I would say if you're at a point where you don't know where to start or what you're doing, start making as close a copy of something, whatever it is, but just have a photo reference. And then that way you can look at it and go, hmm, oh, I see it's a little long here. Oh, it's not as round there. And start by copying because you have a, a reference. Because if you're just making stuff up, there's no reference so what's good and bad, right? What's successful and failure? What, and there is success and failure, right? Because if you want to do a banana and you sculpt an apple, you did not succeed. You might've made a great piece of fruit, but it, it's not a banana, it was an apple. So I think that's really where to start is how you develop a voice is as you're copying things, you start to develop hand strokes, you start to develop muscle memory, there are physical things like, oh, I really like the texture here because that punches that. But that are the, those are the tools that you use to accomplish what you are copying and how you could judge. And now you're going to take those little things, because what your voice is, is the way that your hand interprets and distributes the ideas from your mind. And then that's your vocabulary. Your vocabulary is content and style, right? If you do a lot of Marys, as in like Mother Mary with child, you know, you, you, you have a very specific style of content, right? I'd probably believe that you were a Christian. I'd probably believe that you're a Catholic. You were inspired by Catholic ritual dogma, and the dogma of sculptural vocabularies in the Catholic Church. And I was. I was raised Catholic, and I grew up going to cathedrals. And that whole... The cathedrals are fascinating because they're the apex of geometry. You have, you have the mathematic voice of Catholicism in these cathedrals and it's science. I mean, they were very specific about how they did things in different ages, like the saints' feet, you know, along the arches, none of the saints' feet are touching the ground. There's this concept of loftiness and the afterlife and you're selling that through the geometry. Then you get into some of the Gothic stuff. It's tied, anchored down. You have this, the time of religion and the specific the vocabulary of the religion was much more about not lofting you up but reminding you of the travails of sin so you'll see a lot more gargoyles you'll see a lot of things all of the figures and stuff are planted and or inside of the architecture so it's those buildings are telling a story about you being tied to the earth where some of the earlier stuff and then later, later stuff, you're removed from the earth and you're floating above. And those are very, very clear architecture. And that's sculptural detail. It ties into how the architecture, you had higher ceilings, things arched up, your eye traveled up to the point, you had rose windows that were the portals, these incredibly colorful, detailed portals when they became abstractions as opposed to graphic stories. And so all of that is your vocabulary, right? It's like, what are the things that inspired you? What are the visual things that inspired you to want to figure out what your voice is? And, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to even learn to think about how to think about what you're doing. And so I would say, and I think the masters did this very well, and I think the psychology of it is this, is that you learn your voice by the technical habits that you develop while learning technically what to do, right? It's like, oh, I love blue. Okay, well, you learn that because 
as you were learning, you started painting a lot of blue things, right? And I know that sounds trite, but it's very true, you know? So my suggestion would be to copy and copy with the intention of actually copying so you can judge technically what you're succeeding and failing at. Did that rant um, answer that question? If you don't know what you're doing, yeah, what how do you question? start doing it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Yes, but I think you, that's you a, you it's an important it thing to wrap your head around because, I mean, I hear this a lot. Like, how do I develop my voice or my vocabulary? I think it's by tuning your technical acumen. Um, because the day you stop thinking about how to do something is the day you think about why you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ah. Yeah. All right. We have sort of a Greeky tile pattern, a braid, and then hash marks. Okay. Well, here is another that why I say don't draw on your surfaces sculpt in layers here is now once again you may have intended this so you know take what i say with a grain of salt but by cutting this in here you've actually muddied the separation of this hash mark let lattice work to um your weave here and so let's look at this here and now let's look at it's funny uh henry this sculpting in radial symmetry is obviously ram intensive <laughs> <laughs> it it has to be oh um, that reminds me we still cannot see the top of your screen so every time you start doing radial Hold symmetry on. people are like so that's an obs what in the world thing, did you change because i don't see anything so i think it's got to be an OBS change button. what is captured um if i move this I think if you right click in, yeah, right where your mouse is on my screen, at least oh, that was gone. Um, if you right click in the scene, there should be a transform option that says stretch scale to, to. There we go. Did that do it? Stretch to screen. It looks like it did it on my end. All right. Give it a sec. Yeah, you can now see. Yeah, if it okay, if it looks like it did cool. it on your end, then I'm sure it will on mine. Yay, yes, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right. So now let's look at this. And once again, you know the what you were doing may very well be exactly what you were trying to do, and um, you can tell me to shut up. But um, no, alt. Oh, oh, I'm a dummy. This is already a negative tool. Okay. And I'll come here with clay. Oh no, what was this? 42, something like that, 40? This is always the biggest pain. Does that look like that's hitting everybody? You don't happen to remember, do you? <laughs> oh, that's tragic. Because <laughs> we couldn't see. see. That. Yeah, but, but see it. It does fail. look. No, it doesn't. Right. So it is. Yeah. Yep, it looks close. We're going to call it four. All right. And so here again on this outside edge, right? See how this is dug deep and it kind of separates the um the braid from this back surface but it also breaks the continuity of that surface 
So we're going to come in here and I am going to make the surface equal again. Because I don't want to break the continuity of the surface. Am I doing okay down here? Yeah. Close enough to spit on for now, I guess. I'm going to just smooth the whole thing out because I think he might have actually been 41. I think we got a little unsmooth there, but this is still, we'll be able to do it this way. <laughs> Come on, you. Oh, that was the other video I was supposed to make. The brush video. Forgot about that. Explaining dynamic brush, brush scale, video. max brush size. I forgot about that. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I even yeah, started on it. I have it set up. Okay. So by cutting in and cutting in so you can see how after cutting in see how you by cutting in this creates this bright ridge there where this goes under the surface and I would um, use SK twist you don't want to use SK twist and radial symmetry because every other one will be the reverse but pretend that every other one isn't reversed and let's look at this intersection right here well, that's not going to work like I said we're looking at this intersection right here because this is 42 and this is 100 line so down here this is going to be weird but Look at this one right here. <laughs> Looky here, right? <laughs> I'm being Paul. On these two, see how that looks like those lines are going up and under the braid. And then over here, because I did the braid on top of the surface, it looks like the braid is sitting on top of the surface and see how that's flat. I just did that clay where if you cut it in, we've now destroyed the surface, right? It has this big V in it. So you wind up losing surface continuity and that makes it chattery because where your brain is looking for something to go under the braid well now all of a sudden you have this little scoop in there that changes the direction so does that make sense Luke Did I lose chat? Okay. 
Uh, I, yeah, he said yes, it makes sense. All right, so let's go back to here. Doop, doop. All right, so I'm going to go back to here. So I think that that's where, um, that's what I would look for here is a little bit more surface continuity. Um, stop drawing on your surfaces. Think of them as layers. Even this stuff, um, if these actually become, you know, that is not the right radial. Uh, this is always the hardest. Okay, that's close enough for here. It looks like it's a little off maybe, so might not be 65. So we're going to make this a layer. We'll make this a layer. again these are going to reverse so only look just look right here <laughs> see it gets all squirrely back over here but um. You see how turning this into oops SQ twin and I know that got a little squirrely, but you see how that's going to read better? than if you just cut the lines in. And I know I blew that out a little, and these are backwards because it was rotating the other direction. But look at these two right here. <laughs> Instead of just cutting these in with a tool where I'm cutting, right, I turned them into nice reflective layers and you can see this flatten here, right? It's not just this groove cut in. It becomes a channel that has a flat bottom. And then these are edges. And what that does is it makes it look like it's something sitting on top of another layer. And that allows that to become a nice reflective surface. And like let's say you sulfur this, that gives it this nice big area that's going to get black um, when sulfured and it'll reflect as a nice flat, um, a nice flat surface as opposed to just this big groove. Because the big groove has no reference to these surfaces or the layers. Just those two. These guys are all wonky. But that, compared to that, see how that's a nice cleaner series? Layer, surface, layer, surface. Yeah, without a doubt.
And the other thing to remember is you've made this braid detail proud. So that is what's going to get beat on. Um, so you've created two rather soft edges to get beat up on. Normally, if you're going to put detail like this on something, you'll want it to be behind something that's going to take the beating. Um, you know, if you have some, whoa. That is the wrong brush again. Wrong brush. Yeah, if you take this mangly, bumpy surface, no one will ever look at those. And I'm looking up here. Right as I'm using the radial, I'm seeing, I look at this top edge because that's telling me what the radial is doing. Uh, SK trim. Like, that will hold up much better. Um, and I know that's not the design you want. Um, but, right, because this nice smooth area up here is what's going to take the beating. And then this stuff will hold up if this little thing is higher than those. So that's just something to think about when you're designing this stuff is what's actually going to get the snot kicked out of it when you wear it. Yeah. Make sense? Okay, I'll assume that makes sense. What is our flag here? One, two, three, four. Oh, only four seconds. Okay, that's not bad. Wow, Henry, our lag got better. <laughs> That's yeah, rare. It's not too bad on YouTube. It's Usually Twitch is Twitch, old. But not it's much. Super much. Weird. Yeah, they're definitely not in sync. So, Luke, does that, does that make sense? I think that is all of them. Now, did you, you got what I was talking about on the first one, or did you miss that? Does he want me to just go over it real fast? I missed the first one. Because I have it painted up. It'll we'll be real quick to show him. Yeah, here we go. You probably might as well. It's only 10. So the first one, um, the first thing I was saying is that just having this, I would roll this out and sort of, where are the ones that I did it to? Yeah, sort of like here where you blended into those shapes as opposed to having just that nice little edge because if someone's wearing that and they accidentally get hit, you just made a cookie cutter out of their sternum and you've removed a nice circle of meat from their sternum. And that would hurt. So I would just blend these all in and kind of start on the inside and just roll them out and it'll become much more comfortable to wear. And then design-wise, there are a handful of things that I have questions about. 
Now I'm going to smooth this one out because yours was smooth here. It didn't have this ridge. When I was talking about it, I put that ridge in this one. So this one was soft, no ridge. So you 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 developed a here. Let's take this to white so we can actually see it even a little better. There we go. So you developed a pattern here, and so you developed a visual vocabulary. And then you kind of, so you set your rules, and then you kind of broke them in a couple places. And that's where, um, one sec. Sorry, had to answer that. Um, here, I'm going to put these as red as well real quick because I want to tie those to the... I don't... Paint. I want... Where's the... Yeah, okay, there we go. I don't want that one to be blue. It was confusing. Okay, so you set up a visual vocabulary, right? You have outlines. You have the red are the outlines of your petals because it's sort of a flower form, right? Um, so you have these forms in red that are the outlines of your petals. You then have, and they have no edging, right? They're just smooth forms. You now have a green floral inside the red frame. And they have these ridges. They have more detail in them. Right here and here. They sort of look like these little flourishes. Two issues. Well, one, you break your petal formation here. That doesn't bother me. You're putting stones there. It's, you know, and get away with that. But you only do it once. I would do it at least somewhere else. And, you know, you have five petals, I would probably do it there, there, and, you know, like maybe here, where every other one is getting it. You know, if you're breaking a rule, you need to do it more than once so it doesn't look like you were just screwing up. So if you're going to do it more than once, you need to figure out a pattern to sell it as a design theme. There we go. Now, you have these two in the um, brighter blue that are inside the leaves or inside the petals but they're more like an outline they're like a second tier right it just looks like this is line one this is line two like we could turn these red and that would make sense as a design theme okay well why why aren't these green why aren't these now, you did put two blue things here, so are you taking it and changing it where it has some directionality like this, where it's two on top, one, two? I can roll with that. But then you break it with these purple guys. Now, if it were two of these, right, where this one was here and this one was here, you now have that framing the one Right? You're giving it directionality. Either This is the bottom. It has these little fanny purple things. We have two blue things here, green and blue, or green and green. You see what I mean? You, you, you've you set up a couple rules, but you broke them. And it, it's just intentionality, right? Why? Why did you break them? This guy right here, if it were coming out here, here, right? That makes a little more sense. You know, because then you're basically doing, you know, you have a triangle going through here. And then, you know, a stand and these are coming off of it. 
I can roll with that. It's just this guy right here and this guy right here make no sense to me. You know, I don't like one blue dot here. You know, I'm not saying you have to have a blue dot here. I don't mind that stuff being out of wonky. It's just the pale blues and this purple make no sense to me. And I want you to think about that and tell me why. Or you don't have to tell me why. You need to know why, right? And that's the real issue. So that's my only problem with this is that you've set up some design themes, but you didn't carry through with them. Yeah, nothing better than sternum meat on a stick. It's one of my favorites. So that, you know, and once again, it can be chaotic, right? But like if these two had ridges on them, I wouldn't ask, you know, it's a nice breakup, you know, it's different, but it's the same vocabulary. If it's not the same vocabulary, it, there has to be a reason. If it's good design, if there's good design, there has to be a reason. So. That's really the thing that was here is, you know, if you just take one half, oh, you can't see me. <laughs> you can't see the screen when I take one half. You know, if you take one half, it makes sense. Hold on, let's merge visible. Boop. Mirror and weld. So you see, and I mean, I'm not saying that this has to be symmetrical, right? But you see how this actually isn't bad design, right? You've broken it up. You have this triangle or this bar going behind. Greens, you're breaking it up with the blue and purple. Control Z. Mirror. Mirror and weld. Here you go. You have this weird purple thing breaking through with a dot. You have your three green stages, your two blue. Once again, a more stable design because the places that you've broken, you've broken more than once. So, yeah, I just, I want to know why. Okay. Do you have any questions on any of those loops? Does that make sense? Is it helpful? Mm. Sugar and caffeine water. They said, "Yay, team!" They said, "Thank you very much. It's All right. very helpful." So, did anyone else put anything up there? Of course, anytime. Yes. Yeah. We have lots of files now. I think Juan is still okay. not here. Uh, Jeff is. So let's yeah. move on to Jeff. I believe you will have to download. That I love file. these things. I really do. Uh, Jeff, if you want to jump in chat. Feel free. No pressure. <laughs> we have lots of others. There's one more. What do you mean we have lots of them? Um, that's a negative. You got a bunch more coming in. In Dropbox? Okay. Here in Discord, no. Well, there is another one in Dropbox in the. Oh, they got a uh, whole. I'm gonna try and pronounce this. Oh, they got a whole. Mikhail, Mikhail, folder. Okay, let's. Uh, it's it it's a reference photo and then the ZTL. I didn't either. I didn't know Dropbox lets day, you upload you? folders. 
Yeah. We, Did we? We learned it <laughs> last week, I think, somebody managed it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was going to say, hmm. Obviously, well, I, I didn't learned it last week. <laughs> question is was that photoshopped because that seemed pretty dramatic all right so we'll open that and then we'll open that and then we are going to open No, it's just an interesting angle. I know we're doing jokes to the person. I'm just looking. Oh, I'm not. It just looked like Don't this had been photoshopped, head. stretched, but... When you look at it, it's not. She's an amazing dancer. Brothers. Okay. So we are going to go to Jefferson. Oh boy, everything's lime green. That's very exciting. <laughs> All righty. Okay. How are we doing, sir? Hello, Thomas. Doing fine. So far, it'll be real quick. Mm -hmm. And I just started working on the legs uh, last week, and took to mind what you were, um, what mm -hmm. you were telling me about of like about layering and um lifting yeah. to certain design motifs and have a hierarchy in place so i took that in mind and what i came up with was with for the legs i took the the character has a neck band like a i don't know what it would be called so i, I had that be the theme. main yeah um Yes. The main form that would well, I think wrap around her leg. I mean, there's already a substantial difference, don't you think? I mean, this is much clearer as forms, I would say. Wouldn't you? Yeah. And then I would, the only thing, I'd, I mean, oh, yeah. most of the things I would have to say aren't necessarily um, design issues. It's just more... Just get that to be a little bit more. Clean that stuff up a touch so it's. And I know you're not done. Um, clean those lips up a little bit more so they read a little bit more efficiently as one. You know, that is a single object, right? You know, that lip is just that. It is one form and I assume that right. actually would still have that transition line or those separated forms I yeah yeah oh yes the yeah those were supposed to be separate one thing that I still uh, yeah, you're getting there slightly concerned that. with um, what I did with the legs. I like what I have going on, but, but, but I feel that it's probably being a, uh, a bit bulky and it's the probably breaking up the, yeah. the, um, yeah, a bit too much where it's right. it's supposed to be a mm -hmm. wetsuit and her and anatomy is supposed to be the, the main appeal. 
I feel that what I have going on is breaking away too much. It looks good, but I, I, I don't know if um, what I can do to still retain what I have, but be that it's a little bit more. But be because um, right now it, it blender it, enough that because of it, two things, this shift is actually an external shift. You know, it's not a design on a wetsuit. It has now become its own structural form. Right? It, it looks like a piece of armor more than a wetsuit. And I'll show you an easy or a yeah. way to kind yeah. of, oh, that's the wrong, wrong tool. I'm just cleaning these lines up a touch so we have a, a little something to talk about. And you may, like I said, I'm not necessarily commenting on the design when I'm doing this. I'm trying to get exactly what you were talking about. Well, no, no, I mean... It, Oh, no, common away. Uh, I'm on all this compared to you, so right. I, I just mean I'm uh, I'm turning this into the form or into the sub very, form. Uh, so I'm kind of getting form. rid. Of, I guess what I'm saying is I'm kind of getting rid of some of that graphic design you had here, but I'm just going to keep the shape. And I just meant that I'm not making a comment on the shape itself as being bad. I'm going back down to how to make it look like a wetsuit more than a piece of armor. You know. And so we can keep those as planes, but we're going to remove their transition a little. And what I mean by the transition is the step that was between this one and that one, right? So instead of those becoming big steps, they actually can become very tiny steps as long as these planes are telling the story you want them to. And so I'm going to come up here go back down to my brush standard brush hmm. and then that did that that did that okay and you can see by just knocking that oh, damn it. I love how I turn symmetry on when I want to and when I don't want symmetry. I don't want symmetry. I only want to do one leg. I thought it was being good there. So knocking down the actual architectural steps Right, because you turn that into a big step. Um, and thinking of it in that layer is good, right? I'm, I'm all for you thinking about this as layers, and that's what you did. But I think you just went a little too dramatic with the forms because what you did was separate the... Um, You can see I'm turning this into a layer, but I'm not coming off of the shape of the leg, right? And so now when we come back in here, I'm going to cut that back and in. But I'm using SK trim to continue to knock these back. Like I'm adding on to it, right? 
and then I'm using SK trim and I'm knocking it back down so it's not getting out of control and becoming a big architectural element. <clears throat> it's staying a surface element. And so by knocking all this down and trying to retain the shape of the leg without it becoming too big off the leg, I put my lines in, come back in with SK trim and flatten it out. Put the line in, flatten it out. Put the line in, flatten it out. And so what we're doing with that, you see how I'm knocking the edge off that? But I can come back in and keep the graphic the same, but I'm not allowing it to change that outside curve too much. You notice I have my brush at what, three? Yeah, so I think people, um, <clears throat> and it's easier if you're doing this at a low brush value because it, uh, it keeps, you know, it keeps from it getting just too big too fast. Um, I, it's one of the number one things that I notice with the students is that they don't really change their um, the Z the Z intensity of the brush often you'll change the size but I keep my brush intensity actually very very low and I do a lot of passes instead of um, just one big one yeah I, I... Yeah. I change my intensity a lot too. I, I tend to keep, uh, uh, I tend to keep them mm -hmm. large when I'm when I'm blocking it quick, and, yeah. and then I just start lowering them more and more. Though so I, I I try not to change them too much because I guess for me it, it it's just a uh, an extra or, or more so that if so I'm already at a value of like 10, do I really need it to have it at one if I could just relieve some yeah. pressure from the stylus? Yeah, I, I tend, again, pretty much the same as that. Most of the time, most of the, the <laughs> most of the time, I sculpt in the three to five range in my clay tubes. Uh, when I'm blocking out, I can sometimes get bigger. Um, it also has to do with the more, and this is what's really interesting, the more geometry you have, the less intensity you need to make a mark. And so if I'm dealing with like 300,000 polys, you need to kick it up in that 10, 15 range. Yeah. You know, where if you're doing, you know, a few million, um, you know, I mean, you can look at it. I mean, that's what, three? And that's laying yeah, down yeah. quite a bit of material. So you can see that, one, my silhouette of my leg didn't change that much now, right? You see how I'm still getting my curve here? Where the silhouette changed pretty dramatically here. And it's that it's this point right here that really broke the silhouette of the leg. You see, Boop. just that little point right there, where by knocking it down and bringing it again, I'm still I still have the curve of the leg there. Right. Do you see that? So I think okay. it's just um, kind of creeping yeah. up on the stuff. And, you know, this was a really good place to be, you know, because it allowed you to define this form. And really what's funny is, you know, from right there, all you need to do is take SK trim, come along that edge, knock that point off.
come back in. Cut that curve back in, right? And get rid of that little edge right there. And just make this slightly curved instead of having that um, having that hitch in it right there. By making that line just curve, you see how it is now visually reinforcing the curve of the leg as opposed to it being a sharp corner right there. Yeah. I know it's a constant back and forth. <laughs> But you see how that, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I haven't had this for. A, but I definitely for a think week. you're getting there. You know, without a question, it's definitely coming along. For more than a week. What's that? I I. I was looking up online and I I found this um, this one page uh, giving that was describing um, some tips and tricks for for three D printing uh, figurine and it it brought up a point about how you would have to for your details you'd have to pronounce them more so that they can retain. It depends on your printer. It truly depends on your uh, printer. You know, if you're printing any, at 25 microns, that? you'd be surprised what you can keep in there without having to get melodramatic. Um, now, there is the new... See how that little lip right there? All I did was knock that lip off. Right? See that ridge right there? Compared to that ridge right there, I just knocked that lip back. And that yeah. now kept to the hip shape. Right, and it's just things like that because honestly I think it was only that point and then that lip that were really the big bruise well I knocked this down too but um, you know you can come in here and punch that back so you're removing the geometry from that point and now you have that shape but see even there how it's reflecting as the curve that goes you know this reflects like this where this is reflecting as a plane and then this is cutting in so you're getting this nice bright reflection this is going really dark so it's looking like a you know the surface is doing this where if you just knock those lips off, the surface is still doing that. So I think that could be some of it too, is just, I mean, see how this reads as a really sharp edge and there was a sharp ridge right here where I knocked that sharp edge down. So it's reflecting as a round surface, not a surface doing that. So it's just kind of going back and forth. It's, you know, it's trial and error. Now, um, about the printing, I would do a print test. And there's also, <laughs> it's so funny, I, it took me so long to upgrade to five, one that I still haven't played with it much, but there's the, I don't even know where it is. Is it in, um, is it in Deformation? The, uh, What's it called? Contrast. There's this new contrast right here. And if you slide it up, and I'm just going to be very dramatic. Come on. You can do it. Come on. It'll... Oh, am I going to blow this up now? Uh-oh. Keep your fingers crossed we don't crash. <laughs> I might have... I don't know if you saw that here. Let's go in and look at this real quick. So what contrast does is it creates contrast, right? So it really makes, so this is where we are right now. Let's do undo. See how that's smoother here. And then if we go back, 
see how it made these deep lines deeper? Do you see that? The original? Yeah. The original? Are you going to undo or not? There we go. <laughs> I'm like, come on, you can do it. So this is the original. And then that's the contrast. So contrast is really good if you just pump it up a little before you go to print. It'll really punch those edges. And that should help dramatically in the printing issues. But if you're printing on something like a form labs and you're printing at 25 microns, this is, especially at figure size, you can probably get away with printing 50 microns at, you know, figure size. I might do the head at, at 25 microns, but um, let's soften this up, give it a little bit of, I just want to see what it does here. Sharpen those edges. And just know when I'm making those noises, I'm doing ducky face sculpting. It's really embarrassing. All right, now contrast. Where's my brush? Oh, come on. I just want to see what it does with that lip there. So you can see that it punched that up. It actually took those little lumps and those became strong. But you can see that edge sharpened up some. Let's see, Control Shift Z. Did it. So it, let's look here. Let's just get in here. Control shift Z. Okay, obviously somehow I lost it. So let's. This out. Wait, 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 wait. And so, what we're going to do is duplicate this. And then I'm going to keep that. Oh, I want more than one, actually. that delete hidden run roll around roll around roll around roll around roll around roll around delete hidden you can do it come on little chugger the little computer that could. You can do it. Don't blow up on me. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding you're you're reprojecting details onto yeah, a copy, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. I just want to see what um, in a closer detail what what this is doing for us. Yeah, because I think that I think that contrast what is going to be a is big doing? Okay. 
big help for people because you know I know it's going to show up on my printer I print a lot you know but if you don't print a lot leaving detail soft is very often one of the issues that happens See, like I said, my poor little machine only has 16 gigs of RAM. These RAM heavy things often, these are the things that you can see where RAM is used in ZBrush right here. <laughs> I thought ZBrush was only kept uh, in the after that no, it's processed. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, oh, because, really? Because, well, I mean, they may say that, but I'll tell you what. My machine had a lot of RAM, and when we tied it against other machines that we purchased, my machine still stomped the living hajibas out of our other machines as far as, like, this, right? See, this is where having... Like what's happening right now, this is the difference in a $2,000 computer and a $15,000 computer. People are like, oh my God, why would you ever spend that much money on a computer? Well, I never wait this long for a process to happen, right? Never. And we took the three different machines that we bought for William Henry and we bought a Puget system. We bought, mine was an origin, but we bought a Puget system and two boxes and all are very professional machines right and my my machine had a lot more ram and actually those processors were three and four years newer than mine and my machine saved me hours of work just because of stuff like this where some of our machines this process took like 10 minutes on big models doing you know, that final processing stuff. And my machine would do it like in a minute or under. And you add that up doing that all day, you make your, what, your $12,000 back very quickly. So, um, interesting. Yeah, my machine, uh, it's, it's running 32. It's yeah. only on one processor, but I can actually add a second processor. It's one of those. But, uh, yeah, I've noticed that with my machine, uh, I was, I would, ZBrush would, would still hang, even though I have yeah, 32 oh yeah, no, gigs of RAM. Which nothing to sneeze at. I, mean, I would assume it's still pretty um, good. But, mine had 96 yeah. gigs of RAM. Uh, what well, had the 120 or whatever that came out to but i fried one of my sticks of ram and so i had to pull you know they have to be in pairs so we pulled one out um but my new one i'm very excited about it's a dual processor too it's a dual 26 oh yeah <laughs> 200 and whatever gigs of ram nice yeah. I definitely need to upgrade. Mine's can go up to yeah, whatever that. I think it was either six, twelve, thirty-two, ninety-six. Yeah, you know the one twenty-ish yeah, area, whatever that is. I forgot. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I forgot. It's ninety-six plus thirty-two, right? Is that, it's one of those. Yeah. Well, I, I don't even know if it, I, I something like that. The yeah, that per processor it can yeah. hold a uh, um, hundred and twenty-eight per processor. Yeah, so yeah, like two fifty-six is the, is the theoretical yeah, max that's of mine. If I had thirty-two sticks on so each, so it's a dual. Yeah. It's really funny. We were looking at a the dual 28 core and then I was talking to him and it's funny because it was a dual 28 core but it was only Henry do you remember what it was it was 2.8 or something like that it was a slower yeah 
And then we were looking at the 26 core, I, I don't and know. it was like a 3.4 or whatever. You know, it was a much faster chip. And we were like, well, you know, that's crazy. And it's only, you know, like four cores. What, you know, what's the price difference? $4,000 was the price difference. We were like, all right, we're going with the <laughs> the, the 26 core instead of 28 core. Uh, yeah, five grand for that, those four cores. It was like, holy Hannah, I don't need those four cores. I think I'll, I think I'll be fine with the dual 26. And they're faster chips. And ZBrush likes a faster chip, so. Yeah, mine's are, my chip is slow. It's, uh, it's a, it, my mm -hmm. computer is, it's years old. It, it, it's, it's a, it, and then yeah. it, Hold, it uses the Intel Xeons as its processor with 10 cores, and it's working pretty well. But yeah, that those those processing times sometimes, especially in ZBrush, yeah. with heavier no, models, are just. I mean, well, you just saw how long it took for that to uh, project. Um, yeah, that, um, the the other day I. All day, I, I was um, tweaking the the model, getting rid of some panels that were just mm -hmm. making up some garish um, topolo topology changes. Even though the topology of the whole model is it, still it ain't great because it it was made from Z remesh with some manual, but even then, I would. There were some areas I wanted to change, some parts that I wanted to mm -hmm. um, swap in, like the like the thigh band, because the I noticed that apparently some of the faces were collapsed, it was causing some weirdness, so I had to switch it. And I would I would get my models, I would merge them together with the thing, with the the same subdivision level freeze them weld them together and then unfreeze them and it should work and i would yeah. it would process for a couple hours and zbrush would either crash <laughs> or spit out a random error then crash or yeah it was, the whole mesh would explode for no good reason, and I would, and I would try to, um, I would try to test it with just a random cube yeah, and a sphere. Do the same process. Well, it's really funny. Spots. Like often, and sometimes that is a minuscule coplanar. Pro yeah. What I've discovered is that ZBrush hates coplanar surfaces. Coplanar surfaces freak it, freak it out. It just doesn't even know how to deal with it. It gets weirder in hell, and. Um, and so sometimes you're you're like sit there and you will do everything in your power. I sat there and worked with models and it blows up and then it fails and then it blows up and then it fails and then it fails and blows up and fails. And um, um, I, I dynamesh it. And it's just like, boop, great. You're like, <laughs> I just sat here for six hours fits it and puts it with this and all I had to do is dynamesh it or something, you know. Sometimes it is so weird about surfaces. Um, it's a funny little bugger sometimes. Everyone's, everyone's like, well, I do Z remesh and reproject all the time. It's like, because everything I do will explode and die if I don't at some point here. I'm just throwing some ink too big. A bunch of different little details in here um, to see what this does for us. Really light. Here and heavier. 
And now let's just do a few little layers and see what that gives us. So we have some subtle edging. We have a little bit of dimply weirdness. We have step layers. We have different textures and different lines. Okay, so now let's come down to contrast. And just kick it all the way over. I don't know, that's interesting up there. Look what it did at the top up here. It really accentuated, see those little spaces that I missed there? Really punched those. Really separated our layers here. Punched those dots down. Actually really increased those pinches. Yeah, no, actually. But it's interesting to see what it did to this stuff up here. Let's undo that. And let's look at what we had up here. Undo. There we go. So let's actually get rid of this. Uh, Dynamesh, 1 point million. Boop. That'll prevent that from happening again. All right. Let's try that one more time. And now you can see in that smooth We've lost a lot of what we did there, right? Let's see what it will do for our contrast. Oh. Well, it definitely, that's not a million. What? <laughs> what, that, what, what was that about? <laughs> Hold on, let's. We'll do it here. Fine. You want to be weird with me? Yeah. A million. I was like, we lost a lot of detail there. I thought I just got really overexcited in my smoothing. But no. Come on. Accept. Okay. That's better. At least we have some of it there. Right? It softened a little when we did it. Let me trim all that garbage off so we don't have it. All right, so there we go. So we lost a little crispness there in the Dynamesh, which is to be expected. But there's that crisp little pinch area there in this that we can look at. 
We have our little subtle changes there. We have our temperature and our or our, our dimpleature and our line. Contrast all the way up. Yeah, honestly, that's that's quite useful. So yeah, I would say that you can really kind of come in and punch your contrast pretty dramatically with that. Come in, repair it, smooth some of that stuff out, do it again. You can see that it's blowing out there. But you can see what it does. It starts to, those peaks, it makes the peaks pointier. So all of this pinch stuff, it really does pull out. This stuff, it pulled out great. The lines, it pulls out. I mean, and I was doing it all the way up, so it was being super melodramatic. But I would say that's definitely a useful tool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it's nice that they, they made something for that. Because before you would yeah. add to no, the there was no really good. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just easier to go that, back over it deeper if that's the issue. <laughs> late or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. I would say that contrast is a pretty useful tool for that. Mm -hmm. Now you probably do. Hold on, let's do this. Check mesh integrity. Yeah, two hundred nine phases with multiple reference. Um, nine hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah I. I check that religiously whenever I I see something's already. But the funny thing is, when I check mesh integrity with my with my yeah. model, the it it, it spits out nothing. So I, That's I, I, I tend to be rather rather. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, switch. you know, I think that that when I when I set up my top because just that little punch because. We discovered that we were losing anywhere between two and seven percent um, of detail of surface detail uh, from model to cast, right? And we did that by meticulously measuring corners and you know seeing what our radiuses were on those corners, how much depth we actually lost, like. And I would put in like one micron deep lines, and then I'd kick it up one in the next one with two microns, three microns, four microns. And I did this whole thing of lines that were micron by micron. And we were losing about 2%, uh, 2 to 3%. And we have a meticulous like design to manufacturing change, and we're still losing about that much. So, you know, just taking something like this where it just exaggerates those points because those are the things that you're going to lose. So that's super helpful, actually. I mean, obviously, this distorted everything because I cranked it up 200%. But, um, it looks like it yeah, can actually it, exactly. be, <laughs> exactly. be something. It's starting to look like some funky-looking rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. beings of quite, uh, like something right fine off the so I think that somewhere. yeah I guess end of the day you can punch your detail here in contrast and I think it'll work I think you just need to go back and just make sure your silhouettes are following your body right where instead of this having this big visual sharp edge here you know it, it continues to follow the body and also make sure it follows the body this way. If you want it to look as if it is a wetsuit as opposed to armor, you know, armor is going to ignore that. You're going to get the space in it. So um, I think it, it's I, th I think you're don't don't be shy to change it that dramatically because I think that that dramatic change allowed you to define curves that you were missing before, right? You you were getting your look and. You made it super exaggerated, but all you have to do is knock it off and make it round, and you have that base structure still there, and that's going to allow you to really formulate the design, and then you can knock it back to fit the body. So I, I wouldn't hesitate to be that dramatic with your changes if it helps you define your forms. Yep.
looks great. Moving along. Of course. Right on. Cool. Thank you very much. All right, Henry, how we doing? Uh, we're doing good. Um, I want to derail you for a second. I asked uh, Juan's permission, and he said it was okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't ask Juan's permission. He didn't say it was okay, but I'm going to do it anyway. Of so course. We've had some questions show of up course. in the chat, and I want to get through some of them before we move on. Uh, the first one, can you give us just a little bit of your history? Um, most importantly, sure. how you got into so jewelry I and how you figured out your workflow. I am a traditional sculptor. I sculpted in the film industry for 13, 14 years, something like that. I did around 25 major motion pictures. Um, so I'm a physical sculptor. And I made some, uh, I just hand carved some wax for some jewelry stuff on pirates and everyone's like oh i want to buy a skull ring i want to buy a skull ring and i'm like yeah i actually have a job you know <laughs> i'm not gonna just make jewelry and uh, then years later i sort of reached the apex of what i was doing in the film industry you know i was like leading shows and that's as high as a sculptor can go and i had to make a decision on whether i was going to shift to the art department and try to go the you know the production designer path and i decided that there really weren't enough weird outrageous movies that i'd be happy as a production designer you know if i had to do like a historical period piece i'd throw myself off a cliff because i just you know unless it was castles and gargoyles and weirdness you know but there's just I just didn't feel like I was going to be really satisfied with going into the production department. So I left the film industry and I kind of futzed off for a few years. And then someone asked me to make a skull ring and I hand carved it and sold it for like 800 bucks. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should look at actually making jewelry because it's just sculpture, you know. And... Uh, I kind of fell into a community that was very, very supportive of me, of jeweler, because I'm not a jeweler. I'm a sculptor who makes jewelry objects. Now, I can go from, you know, from whack or from design to casting. I, at this point, after 16 years, I'm familiar enough with it to where if I had the equipment, I could do it in my garage. But jewelry is really sort of a collaborative sport if you're going to do it at a very high level because um, you know you just don't want to spend the time to get good at all of the different skills it takes to do high quality jewelry you know setting and bench work and casting and finishing and I mean it's stone setting those are all different craftsmen's jobs now don't get me wrong there are a handful of people who are great at it and can do it all very well but those are people who grew up in their dad's shop or their mom's shop and they've been doing it since they were a kid it's a lot to learn and especially if you're starting from the computer side if you're starting on the computer side or from the design side i would say don't bother wasting your time trying to learn it I mean, if you want to, of course, you know, take classes and blah, 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 blah. But learn to be a designer. Don't think that you're going to be a competent bench jeweler in two years. It's not going to happen. You know, it's just, you know, these are lifetime careers. And so I luckily ran into a group of people that were really supportive and were like, okay, Tomas, this is how you finish. And then I showed my designs and they were like, oh, you know, you need to consider this. And, um, I started making jewelry and I was doing a lot of metal work right in the sense of it was a silver ring it wasn't silver with diamonds and this and that and um, then Jim hired me at Green Lake and we did ink metal and at Green Lake I had a lot of freedom to 
you know, I was in a shop where there were very, very apex craftsmen. There were great casters. There were great stone setters. There were great bench jewelers. So I had a really wonderful opportunity to do my work because I didn't come into Green Lake being hired to work at Green Lake. I came in for Green Lake to help make my jewelry marketable, right? Because I was just doing one-off stuff in my house, basically. And Casting House in Chicago was doing all my casting. And the, lucky for me, because, I mean, they are a apex casting facility. And so from the very beginning, I was making things that were near impossible to cast. And they were doing it for me. And so... I had a lot of really professional help in that whole technical startup end. And honestly, it's trial and error is how I developed. Because if we look here, let's look at this. Uh, let's go to Ink Metal. And this is the website. This is with Green Lake Jewelry. And so. Um, if we look at some of these early designs, let's just look at skull rings. You know, the sugar skull, you know, this isn't sculpted in layers, right? <laughs> I mean, this is drawing on my surface, a little bit more sculptural than most. I was actually drawing positively as opposed to with um, negatives. But a lot of these rings don't abide by my rules that I have now. It's because I was learning those rules here. You know, if we look at this one, this is supposed to be a little visually chaotic, but you can see that I'm starting to figure out that layers work better than chatter. And I still love the hash mark stuff, but you can see this starting to evolve on the gas mask. You can see that instead of just cutting the stuff in, I was starting to figure out what showed and what didn't. And on this one, we probably made five different versions until I liked it, right? You know, because I'd sculpt it, we'd print it and cast it. And so really how I develop my techniques of what work are printing them, casting them, and looking at them, right? So you can start to see this concept of layers. You know, oh, I have hash marks. These are going in a different direction. And you'll notice these have little layers, so it reads a little deeper. Uh, this is a really early one. And you can see this didn't have a ton of layers, right? You know, I mean, there's some here, some here, but this is pretty chattery. Um, and it reads that way. You know, it, it, this was one of the very early rings. Now let's go to this one. And you can see here that after the polish, a lot of this goes away because those, these steps weren't necessarily, see, these aren't steps. These are just cut in. But... I was working towards it. And you can see how the polish here eliminates a lot of the design. And so, uh, you know, I see this and I'm like, okay, well now how do I fix that? And then you can see the gas mask, which was after this one. These aren't just lines. These are actually stepped layers, right? You can see how that's not just a line. There's a layer there. And this held up, right? This looks more detailed than the last one. And why that is is because it was sculpted in layers. And at this point, you know, it was just sitting there because these are, I mean, these are the very early rings. These are some of the first rings I ever made. And you can see that there's not a lot of, look, the teeth are getting knocked down because I was just cutting the teeth in. You can see the detail on the forehead was getting knocked down because I was just cutting lines into the surface. It gets knocked down. You can't see it. But some of this stuff really held up. And it's like, why did this stuff hold up and this stuff not hold up? Uh, let's see, where's another one here? You know, once again, lost the detail in my teeth. The fingers hold up okay. You know, this is a pretty simple ring. But all my forehead detail really kind of went away. I didn't know why. You know, it's just like, oh, we're over polishing it. Well, it wasn't just we're over polishing it. It's that it was flat. So when it gets polished, it goes away. But look at how clean this stuff holds up, right? And so from making these pieces i then went to the like these were my first designs these are gosh 16 17 years old now but you as a sculptor i was sculpting a lot of this stuff right so 
I had an advantage because I understood three-dimensional space a little more. But you can see, if you look at these models, these are all very detailed, and the, but it's just cut in there, it's just polished off. So this was the fight that I was going through 16 years ago, right? And so by going through these steps and then actually having a lot more of my work produced at Green Lake, you know, as opposed to me paying for it at, you know, each piece of the studio, I had a great advantage here where the shop would produce it. If it didn't work, we just melt it down. You know, there was, we had the freedom of producing stuff. And this is one of the later pieces. And you can see that it works really well. And what's funny, it's super flat pieces. You know, there's not a lot of, now it's for Pave, so of course there's not a lot of sculpture on it. But these layers really read beautifully. Having this bright shape against the lines where you're, I'm starting to learn contrast. If you have a bunch of lines behind it, put something smooth on top of it. If you have something smooth behind it, put something chattery on top of it. And it's just this whole system of contrast that I really started to wrap my head around. And um, yeah, you know, it, it literally was a progression of, you know, what works and what doesn't. It's really funny. This is actually the very first piece I ever made. Um, and it was made in Matrix. And I'll tell you what, everyone was blown away. I got something this deep out of Matrix. This thing took me forever because these are all filleted surfaces. And I had to cut it out and bully in that part and bring it back. This was an <laughs> this thing took me so long to make because there was no zebra. I wasn't using ZBrush at this time. Um, but, you know, you can see that as a sculptor, I had a big advantage because I understood depth of surfaces. And I then just had to figure out how to sort it out. You, you want to talk about a cheese grater. See how flat it is on the back? Man, if this thing got flipped over and on your chest, all these were sharp point. Oh, my God, it was. I mean, I think you could see this. So they're all scooped and it's all CAD. So these edges are just like metal meat spoons. They're horrible. <laughs> It's a cool piece, but this was literally the first piece I ever made. Um, let's see. And here, and these are made much later, here you can see that we started to learn layers, functioning. How do you get it to work? How do you get these things to stand off the surfaces? And it was just a progression of experimentation. And, um, yeah, I, I think that... Uh, I think being at Green Lake was incredibly, incredibly helpful because, like I said, we could print and cast anything. And if it didn't work, they just melted it down. But it allowed me to touch, hold, feel, see it after polishing, see it after, you know, everything. And this, so you go from this to, let's go to Art Station. Settings. Why won't you automatically sign me in? You should automatically sign me in. Let's go here. Stop it. Uh, all right. So we went from that stuff to this stuff, which was William Henry. And this was the next big transition transition. And you can start to see that now I understand contrast and I understand layers. And a lot of this was feuding with just some goofy design concepts. But you can see that there's been a very distinctive education that's <laughs> happened since that last point to here. And um, yeah, it's just... And all of this stuff, everything we did here, we printed, we touched, we held, you know. Because, see, this was actually a very early piece that I did with them. These were tests at, from Green Lake is when I did these. And you can see that this is just very illustrative. It's more like an illustration because when you just draw with one ridge line, right, all you're going to get 
is one line of bright surfaces, right? This isn't a complex surface. This is just lines, right? And you're polishing it and you're just getting bright lines where when you start to get to like things like this, you know, these are bright lines, but they're layers. They tie in differently. It's not just drawing on the surface. Here, we have a lot of lines, but very clearly these are layers that are going over other parts, that are going over other parts, that are going over other parts. And it reads incredibly well. I mean, that's an eight millimeter bead. These are tiny. And we get really good detail out of something so small where you saw that we actually lost more detail on that ring from Green Lake, the biomechanical one, then these hold much more detail. These look much, much, much more detailed. And they're tiny. And it's because when you do it in layers, you can see that this is getting polished off, but it's leaving that, and that's going behind that surface, and that edge is getting polished off. But because it's literally doing what you're trying to get it to look like, it'll show that it's doing that. And so it was just this progression of um, produce, print, hold, look, remake, print, hold it, look at it, remake it, hold it, look at it. I mean, some of these things I have, you know, 15, 20 different iterations on the same part to try to get it to look right when we printed it. And, you know, after 16 years of that, I have a pretty good idea of what's going to show up and what's not. And like I was talking about earlier, you know, while I was learning the techniques of how to make these things work, you also start to develop your visual vocabulary. And so that's really the steps, you know. Uh, did that answer that question? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Uh, Joe, you asked the question. Let me know if you, if that. <laughs> um, so we had another question quite a while back um, that I, <laughs> I mean, all of these from a while ago. I just, I'm compiling them while you do crits and then uh, I just stop you and hit you with them all. Um, somebody wants to make a sharp edge of a blade and they've tried to do it with trim adaptive and flat. How are they doing it? Um, can you just show us real quick how you'd make a sharp edge? Uh, it says, I cannot do it with trim adaptive and do it with well, flatten. How can I do it with trim? I'm, not, I'm sure. not 100% sure uh, what they mean by that, but I figure if you just show we'll us how you make the edge of the blade. Let me get a straight line here so I know where I'm going to at least. Okay. So let's trim front. Let me give myself my little line. Okay, so I know that's where I'm going to. Now, can I lock? I removed it because I was using Okay, so if you have a space mouse, this is really easy. If not, you kind of have to guess. So I rotate it to where my angle is. I don't have my um, axis locks on this interface, so um, I can't rotate it perfectly on that axis, but um, it, you know, you can do it here, W, go here, line it up with that edge. Um, let's go to the center. And you know, what do you want your angle? Let's say 30 degrees. So this way you can go like this and rotate it to be whatever you want that angle to be for your cut, 30 degrees, trim front, start at that lip, boom, So 
So you go there, and you got your baseline there. W, bring it back to zero, and now go negative 30. Q, trim front, cut there. And just go planar, knock it off. And so I tend to use planar, and you'll notice how I'm going over that edge. Now I'm going to come back to this plane and cut it. That gives me that sharp, nice edge. And then, you know, whatever you want that second angle to be, um, you just rotate it around. You get your, um, you get your second grind angle. Um, come back to center. And so, you know, pick your second grind angle, let's say 70, trim front. And I don't have a ton of um, geometry here, but here, let's. Why is that only going to 135? Sometimes it does this, and I don't know why Dynamesh Master does that, and it bothers me. So let's go to W. Come in here. Come in. Come on. Uh, remesh by Dynamesh. A million. Now, you also obviously can just do this in Z Modeler and just do it there with one plane you can set your angles and stuff but i'm assuming you're dealing with a mesh instead of just starting from the very very beginning um, cute and so whenever you get a point where your edges are wonky use the planar tool come in here and i'm holding alt and that's filling everything down at that angle and you can see that with the alt it pulls over your edges but if you come here and just use planar, planar won't roll over the edge. And so we just come in, and there's that. Obviously, do it to the other side. And then, Oh, all right. <clears throat> I forgot my angles. Is that? Yep. No. Shaisa Yuba. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you want your grind angles to be. And then from there, like if I were going to put a curve in it or something. I would just bend dark, get my curve where I want it to be, and then just start using that as the next you know, part. But I tend to put my blade angles on it um, before I bend it, if I'm doing it from here. Um, obviously, you can start with more geometry in there mm -mm -mm -mm. let's get less geometry here okay why is that doing that's weird very annoying um, boop. just get a center line in there that's okay that's okay w Stretch it out to where the squares get it to the thickness you want it to be. And here you can also um, get whatever your um, no, not by radius. 
guess I want that infinite x, y, z. If you have a graphic or a design, you can come in, match your design. Get whatever your grind, like the thickness of your grind there. So it's one plane or one poly. Come here, select those, W, define where you want your grind line to be, drag it to it. Come here. Excuse me. There, defined where you want your grind line to be. Drag to it. And then you can either, uh, you know, select all of these. We don't want that middle line to change, so we're going to grab it and unmask it, and then flip, and we just drag that down, and now that is your edge, right? Come back in, tune that curve up. There you have a grind, edge, and I would turn smooth off, divide it a couple times, turn smooth on, divide it. Boop. And then you just come back in and I tend to use SK trim and just get that smooth. And you just define where you want your grind to be. Yeah. Does that make sense? Looks good to me. Whoever asked that question, I, I haven't been keeping track. You'll have to let us know if that sufficed. Uh, last question. Uh, I think this will be an easy yep. one. Do you remember brushes made by Ma Studios called Mech Cut Brushes? No, I haven't. Well, it's funny, just at uh, some point in my... I'm confident you my, don't um, still use them because I've never seen uh, you mention them. But what, I used to use them quite a bit. And then I found a brush that did something that I wanted to do. Yeah, they just sort of... Like in one of my upgrades, I didn't load them and I had other solutions and I just sort of left them behind. But... They're worth going back and looking for because they're um, a good set of brushes. And if you can't find them, uh, yeah, I mean, they should still work. If not, I can call I found him some and versions from like 2011. Because, uh, I mean, we communicate. Michelangelo Antonio Hernandez. Yeah, I don't, cool. I don't see why they. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't, wouldn't still work. work. I mean, they're just brushes. I mean, it's not like they're plugins, you know. I mean, it's a brush. It should. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, off to Juan, which I believe you have loaded already. Ba <laughs> it, it inevitably loads anus first every single time. Uh. <laughs> yes, I know. It's just like. All That's right. intentional. Very good in yourself. <laughs> awesome. Very awesome. Nice. How are you? Very good. I very good. just put a little bit of weight into this curve in the sense of. Um, 
Hmm, what do you do? Hmm, escape trends here. We might as well. Now, see, Henry, here's a perfect example of why I use dynamic brush scale. That's at 5,000. <laughs> what an mm. idea. Maybe you should make a video about it. Oh, I have a question. Would you rather for me to submit the... Um, six one my might have models I, I mean, honestly, it, it's not... Or you thing. want all the layers? Dio, other than... What do I have turned on that is okay. doing that? SK trim. Does it think it's a bigger brush? Look at that. What is, what is that even about? Hmm. Go to clay tubes and see. Boo. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to shut down ZBrush. We'll just reboot ZBrush. I don't know why it's being spazzed like that. But see, what I've learned is I don't even bother trying to solve that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, did it three times. I don't have an answer for it. Reboot. That usually solves it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hold on, let's oh, you also have like a lot of point different point models point. loaded at the same time, right? While we're waiting. There we go. <laughs> Come on, ZBrush. Boop. Turn all off. All right, let's try this again. Let's go to downloads. Um, oh, we didn't do ballerina either. Okay, hold on. So I need to load ballerina. And then I need to load. Where'd you go? Hmm. My shoulders are supposed to sound that crunchy. All right. Let's just see if. Wow. Okay. That's super weird. Is that going to do it on this? Nope. All right. That's just completely your model. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, hold on, let's see. Sliders, the sub tools, it's fine. Frame W. I'm just gonna dynamash it. And let's see if that solves the problem. Because whatever is going on there, it does not like it at all. Yeah, it's weird because in the morning I, I did a little uh, look at that I play around a little bit and then I decimated to 1000 and I uploaded it right away so I didn't have a chance to uh, take it farther and that's after a dynamesh okay let's let's see remesh it Escape, turn adaptive off. Z remesher, 
I should have duplicated it. That's okay. We can do it in a second. I don't... That's a new one on me. I don't know that I've ever seen that one. Yeah, no, I mean, I just read Dynameshed it, and it, uh, yeah, and you know, I mean, that should make it a shell. I don't know what. All. And it's not a ZPR, so it's not like I'm bringing weird world yeah. elements in. You can do it. You can do it. Ugh. I don't even know. I'm sure you're waiting so, for your uh, new computer. That no I can't even think that. about it because it's just like, uh, I don't want to duplicate it. We're going to take you back. <laughs> you always think I, I'm just going to sleep with That's it for a couple of nights. That's first and then, project uh, with your new computer. What and then I'll decide what. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> He's going to record some videos for. Uh, that That is going to be the thing I have to do for the next year and a half. I don't think there's any <laughs> escape from that one. Oh, my gosh. Um, Eric. Yeah, Eric Keller. Does the, uh, he, um, video, uh, editing. he goes in and puts all the cool zooms and points Eric. at the arrows and the buttons that I don't tell you I'm using and uh, everything that I forget to do. He goes in and makes sure, makes sure that it's there. <laughs> You know what makes a color huge, correction has make a huge difference on my photography workflows color correction mm -hmm. yes because once i have a color cast and i correct my my photos or videos i have a perfect setup and uh, now whatever tweak i'm gonna do let's say a filter on top it's just a transition is smooth uh -huh. otherwise if i go by eyeballing it I create a lot of plasters of black along the ways. Okay, that's just weirder in hell. But uh, yeah. Okay, we've just uh, that has been a time saver. We have me. this is a completely new model. This is a quad model, Z remeshed and projected, right? Yeah. What is that about? I mean, the brush is blowing through the model. Right. Oh, oh, do you have you it what? turned on? I think I know what it is. Oh, yeah. What about your thick skin? Because I that's was playing it with is. it before I. Uh, there we go. I had it. I'm like, on. I don't that even know what that's about. <laughs> Why is that doing that? So here, let's go back to your model. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Interesting. Oh, there uh, you go. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, it might just be turned on so thick that it's actually blowing through. Technology. You know, it's looking for a brush. It, here, let's just look at, yeah, look at the thickness on that, 159. Yeah. Let's, let's bring that down to like 36. Thick skin is turned on. Nope, that's not it. It <laughs> <laughs> was a nice idea. Okay, we're going to turn that off. Don't know what's going on there, but... <laughs> All right, so now let's try this again. I would give some of these fat rolls a little bit of weight so they're not just tubes, but so there's a, you know, a thin to thick. Um, and I would still say, be careful about, and especially on the fat rolls, be careful about, um, cutting the detail in right because if i come in here and i take planar and hold that down and hold down alt is it going to fill yeah, actually that's not bad i mean we're eliminating a little curve there see how right when we get to the yeah back here it's much more obvious 
So C, as I was going up to the roll of fat, you were curving in pretty dramatically. Here, let's go back here. See that V cut right there, as opposed to, oops, hold on, hold on, oh, see how it's filling in that V? Because, you, yeah. So okay. don't use I, slash on these. If you're going to use something, I use using, your uh, SK slash. twist. And you can use it low, but it's giving you the separation. Because here, I'm just going to draw here. The silhouette of this should go like this and then kind of come up, get some weight, pinch, and then go out. And if you're using slash, what you're getting is you're getting this. And then it's just doing this and doing this. And so you see how that's not a fat roll. That's just a V. And you're losing this edge right here. It's becoming a sink in. And what makes fat rolls so interesting and kind of cool is that they are actually, you know, this is pretty good here, right? You still have the V there, but this side's good. You got a fat roll. It comes in, hits that, and then often it does that. It's not that. Does that make sense? So, yeah. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I was trying to use a slash brush, and then my angles yeah, were way exactly. too wide, and I was using pinch. And that's the effect that I got on that on that roll. Then on mm -hmm. the armpit, what I did is that uh, I totally used the good old uh, clay brush, and then uh, uh -huh. smoother and kept building with a uh, because this SK there is no space here. That's field. why it's rolling. Yeah, is that this is coming up to this edge and stopping and rolling off. So the height of this roll is actually like right in here, right? It's not out here because this is pinching up and is this decimated? Okay, let's, I'm going to dynamesh this just so we can sculpt on it a little more. Uh, uh, yes. Boom, boom. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. trying to be proactive. No, nope, nope, without a question. A There's no very low, issue. I just, uh, it, it just model. becomes hard to just demo when you have some of that stuff going on. Um, so here, let's do this. I'm just going to smooth this out a little. get a little roll going the other direction, right? Because it's fat. Right, so we get mm -hmm. and the weights up here at the intersection. Get a little bit of weight into that roll, and that's there. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. It, it's really just, it's directionality gets tricky to think about. So um, let me, I'm going to use inflate with a lot of gravity. And so you can come along and see how it's all pointing down. I'm going to point it down and out just a little. Come on. Why are you? Oh, gravity strength. Let's kick that up. And that allows us to, instead of going straight down, I want it to come towards me just a little. So you see how I've tilted that angle out a little. And then when we bring this in, you can come in and and so you can see how it's not right. The gravity's pushing down. Where here it's there, and you see where the gravity is. Right, like out here, it's very little here. It's a lot. And so yeah. that's where and you see how that looks a little bit more like them intersection. And I'm I'm just making these straight. I'm not trying to get it super exactly to what you do. I'm just talking about the curves, right? Not necessarily their exact positioning and stuff. So you're like, what well, Tomas, that looks like a belt. I'm like, <laughs> not what I'm trying to show you um, and it's interesting because if you're <laughs> behind your gravity see how the gravity is pushing that out because if it's behind where you're pushing gravity will push away if it's in the gravity well, and so you feasibly can make this big and really get the feel of the hump right now, if you kick your gravity up more, it's going to be more dramatic. And see how this is flat on the top side, or flatter on the top side, and you're getting it down here at the bottom. Yeah. Um, I think for this example, the uh, FK twist, it will be just easier, mm -hmm, right? Exactly. And I find that uh, the SK cloth that I have, it has just a little bit of gravity. And it's funny, the gravity is actually in the opposite direction as you think it is. But it's nice because it allows you to come in and really accentuate those curves once you find them. Right? And it allows you to get a nice edge on your role i know i flatten this out over this time frame but here you know where you're actually getting you know those little yeah doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, where you can really punch after you twist And the other nice thing about twist is that as you're laying lines down going one way, if you just reverse, you're now laying the line down the other direction. And so it really allows you to get sort of some of that, like this stuff here, where if you're coming down and it transitions, you just flip the direction and now you have the weight transition flipping, you know. Sorry, I totally turned that into a belt. <laughs> You know what we were talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say just come in and get your edges with twist. Right, because it'll let you get those transitions a little smoother. <laughs> yeah, here's another one where don't use slash. That's coming out. 
that's going in under Clay fill behind it. Hmm? I thought Kansita gave me better effect than the pinch tool. Yeah, no, well, what's funny is, like, you know, you can get in here and, that like, that line's a little bendy. I might use pinch to clean that up, right? Because you can direct that point. But it's allowing that meat to roll. That's the real key. You know, so I would play with that a little more. Um, but all in all, that's still just absolutely hysterical. Yeah, and the other thing I would do is when you intersect, like see a hole here is just fine, right? Because it's a hole. But when you ins intersect with like the arm and such, I would come in and try to make it at least look a little bit more naturalistic just blend it in a touch more you know just get rid of that edge and you know you know that it's um it isn't natural but if you just if you yeah exactly so it doesn't just look like you punched a hole in it where it looks yeah, like, like you at least like thought softer, about it right transition. And that's still a hole, but that, you know, from there, unless you're really paying attention, you're not going to notice that there's a big dent in the arm, where if that's a crisp line, you're like, well, what's that, you know? So don't give them, um, don't create obvious just cutouts and stuff, right? Just kind of hide a little. And it's just one less thing to notice. I might even just punch that transition, soften that up just a touch. Right now that's not, you know, it's not so obvious that you're just like, yeah, well, way to punch a hole in something, you know. <laughs> going to dive under that stuff under the yeah but it's a dog so who knows I could be wrong <laughs> look at that yoga belt everybody needs a yoga belt do, 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 do. put a big star on it there you go he's a yoga star no <laughs> I'm just kidding um, yeah no I think it's definitely getting there I think you're definitely much closer to it. I don't know. After the last critique, I don't know if I was overthinking it, but what I did with the holes is that I measure uh, jump uh -huh. rings that were like, and then I tried to use the those as a punch hole. And a gauge 16. Sure. But then with the intention to put a jump, mm -hmm. uh, jump ring. Or maybe so what I would do, honestly, I would come in and you can see smaller, how. Smaller size. Like what's happened here with your hole. Um, I would just come in and make this just bigger. Give it plenty of room. Because right now I'm adding this, but that's adding it to the negative side of the okay. hole, right? So basically, I'm digging the hole out from the inside, and um, yeah, you know, I would just yeah give it plenty of room, give it plenty of room up here, and just flatten that out, just so you're not if you pick a ring. 
you know, and it's just like a slight angle off and it's going to pinch and bind in there. Yeah, just give it plenty of room. Because they're going to have to pick this out anyway. Like the investment wise, this isn't going to come out super easy. They're going to have to do a little work on it. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's big. If that makes any sense. And yeah, yeah, it does. Because <coughs> what I did is that I mm -hmm. was playing with uh, something along the lines, but I use a very wide uh, boolean at the bottom. But uh, yeah, I have the same effect. Yeah, I, no, like, I, I tend to do I crap know, like that. Ask, and they hate uh, me because they have to pick it out, it's and it's really random. annoying, but. Get over it. I mean, you know. <laughs> and so now you can have, you know, a lot of variance in your jump ring, and there's plenty of room in there to deal with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, um, maybe not the not this model related, but do you know what what are the difference between uh, um, Volcanized well, rubber mold versus uh, a okay. uh, so liquid mold? <clears throat> a vulcanized mold is a much more traditional mold, right? That's what they used to use before really the liquid silicone happened, and the difference is heat and pressure. Because what happens in a vulcanized mold is they have like these strips of silicone like this, right? And they stack them together and they put the one model in between it and they put the other one in between it. And a vulcanizer has a rectangle shape like thing. You set the things in and then you crank it down. And what it does is, as the heat goes, it just presses and presses and presses and presses and presses and presses, and, presses and it then molds around it because it's melting the silicone, right? It's getting hot enough where it presses it together, and that's how you get your um, impression. Here, let me see if I can find a vulcanizer real quick. Um, we have the Google machine. I would. So in a way, if let's say I decide to go for yeah, liquid exactly. uh, silicone, and you have will exactly. be better, right? Because otherwise the bolt uh, knife I need to create a mask. So you see, with, it has the with frame. With one, I can throw a And wax. then you just take. Oh, oh that's very funny. Little. I I wanna I wanna address that real quick. Um, 3D printed waxes do. tend not to do very well in silicone rubber. No, we oh. we print in the in the 3D uh, printed waxes or 3D yeah. printed hard models. Why not? In castable resin? Oh, that never works for me and I've always been told it never will. Uh, because of the uh, I don't remember the scientific reason as of a um, solvent i'm guessing yeah yeah just the the area of the silicone that's actually touching the mold never ever ever cures i've got molds i could have sworn we used a year ago i could have sworn we used um, tacky to the touch so i always cast like, a master mm, good no good on saying that yeah no no good on saying that but I was going to say that is one of. I, I'll be I reporting would, I on this. I would check with Tony um, before you recommend on, let's that. Let's go to Form Labs real quick. I just got. Well, it's coming. Let's go to Materials. Uh, dental. <clears throat> I just ordered some of this. Yeah, I think this is it here. Is this what they call their model? Yeah, model resin. So I just ordered some of this. Um, it's high precision, so it's designed to be printed at 25 microns. And it's, um, it's a matte finish, and it's high detail. 
and it's pretty tough. Um, and so I actually was getting some of this stuff to try as a master mold part or a mastering part. Yeah, it's the castable. Yeah, no, that's fascinating because I know and, that. And that should that should work totally I fine. Say that, it's just the I'm castable resin. Stick my foot totally. in my mouth if yeah. I say that too much because I you the thing is is I use so many different resins. Um, you know, he very easily gets oh print that in gray and I just didn't pay attention to it so um very good to bring that up because i had assumed that some of those were definitely uh molded off of the uh off of the castable yeah and it might be that the purple has a, a different makeup that works well with those silicones. It might be Costaldo ice mm -hmm. specifically. Uh, I, I don't know. Interesting, because it could be that the purple I is different only because the purple problem. is tough as hell too. Um, but people you know what I mean? It, it's so pretty robust would... stuff. We'll have to ask Tony about that because. Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think I have an idea why. Years ago, I used to work in a oil and gas lab, and we used to make uh, we used to dip rust mm -hmm. into resin, and they had blue or red for their uh, technical re uh, reasons. The formula was ninety nine percent the same, but the color. However, the red color was way softer than the blue color, and even the amount of dye that we were using was like the same point. 0.01 grams or you know silicone almost neglectable mold form labs purple so that could be one of the reasons I don't, I don't know it's not going to work with 165 oh no that's that's vulcanizing that's not what I mean uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, Formlabs does yeah. make a resin that's specifically for vulcanized molds, though. Clear resin mold injected with liquid silicone. No, that's not what I... Let's see if how to make silicone molds if they are talking about vulcanizing. So they're using gray there. Okay. That's that's gray, that's not the purple. So they're not showing. I, mean, I can run some tests. I can run some tests this week because um, I you have get some of the purple dough ice and uh, a form three coming with a bunch of different types of resin. So I have the yeah, mold. I got purple. I have that I got model. Castable 40, the I got gray. the dental model resin yeah. i have tough 2000 and tough 1500 and the new castable showing up because i want to do some glasses prototyping with the uh mm -hmm. with the tough 1500 that's the one that's cool. sort of springier well they're not showing the purple as they're not making silicones with the purple so i i, I could be totally wrong on that i mean you know i'm not in the shop so I, I could be totally making that up because I just, you know, Tony says, send me models and I assume interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now see there, they're using gray. 
fascinating. Fascinating. I don't know. Is Tony on Discord? Say, hey, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think <laughs> but I mean, we know how to get a hold of a Juan if. Oh yeah. Want to answer this question for him? Okay. I'm always on the on the Discord group. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, no, he's looking great. He's funnier than hell. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, I would thank say you. Thank you. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna work I would say those think, and, uh, also when you're thinking about your yeah, wrinkles, I'm gonna, I'm gonna print it don't so. just think about them as well, print it and cast it. a wrinkle, right? Think that, you know, the entire belly shape, right? It doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, the belly, the whole belly is kind of plumper, you know, where it's the whole weight coming in. And I'm not saying you necessarily have to make him fatter, but, you know, I'm just saying that especially like belly weight you know the whole model is just a little plumper it's not just the ring now here this is actually a good wrinkle for the arm right you have a little bit more weight coming in here that's going back this is pinching for this is this is a nice moment two thumbs up yeah the weight's hard you know, because like where, you know, the weight's actually down here, you know, so the wrinkle would actually be less there, more here. But. So kind of thinking of where the meat actually is happening. You know, I, I should just take a picture of me doing this yoga pose. I'd look exactly like this. <laughs> I'm going to load it up in the right direction first. You, I guarantee you. Yeah, no bubble, please. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, nope. Two. Well, I quit. Anyone yeah, right. want to moderate it? Uh, that time? would be a career ending move in so many ways. <laughs> no. I'm, a, I'm an educator. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Is that what they call that, buddy? You know, there is a market out there for everything. <laughs> nope. I <laughs> know oh, that's sort of interesting. So, actually, that one works pretty well. So, this is SK Clay Phil with gravity turned up pretty high, facing straight down. And as we come around the jowl, see how it's low there, but look at how it fills out. You see what I mean? So the weight of it's down here. And that's a little too square, but there you go. Oh yeah, it pulls down. Wait, wait, no, that was up. Yeah. And see as you're filling it in slowly. See how the jowl is actually the weight's now down here. You know, working on your base shape with the gravity on might not be bad. See, that's funny that see how it fails here because as I stroke across here, look where the gravity is right there. You see how it so it's digging in. But mm -hmm. rotate it like that. Because remember, gravity works to camera, not the world. So if you're trying to get that lift with gravity, tell it where you want the gravity to hit. And let's go down a little. Not perfect. SK Clay feels a weird brush to do it with, but on the jowl it worked pretty well. Because you see what I mean? The 
the weight drops as opposed to sitting up there. Not super fun, even though he, even though he has no buttocks, he just has. A yeah, I'm gonna play with that uh, with that thing on the, on the green goal. <laughs> Poor little guy. <laughs> little, little Groover gotta have a little bit of buttocks, doesn't he? Why I avoided? I was being uh, didn't know how to merge it with yeah. with the tail. I feel you. I'm just like, and I just you know. picture all that area being too complex for what I was trying to achieve. Just a just a little bit. I mean, not. Just but a yeah, a little bit of a uh, feeling will give him some more. We don't know. He's cool. Right on. Of course, can't wait to see the next iteration. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I am not really working on my head about it, but I really want to work on cool. the lot of printing fun. and casting of this boy. And uh, yeah, yeah, move from there. Um, hey Tomas, what's the name well, of the utility so, that you makes So you mean um, um your model into It show. is precision extraction negative. Is that the one you're thinking of? So uh, but you have to remember you have to mask yep. it, right? That's so if we wanted to turn this into a shell, mask it and then go yeah. precision extraction uh, we're going to make this point negative point two just so it's thin right now. I don't want a big blowout. Enter. Update max thickness. Create precision extract. Dun, 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 dun. You can do it. You can do it. Boop. There we go. So now here is our precision extraction. We're going to hide this groover. And then if you look at it, no, oh, well, where's the shell? <laughs> Why does that have no thickness? Oh, I love it when things work. Okay. Um, have any well, we're actually try, like, looking at trying to find a... To do, like, uh, plastic, plastic toys just at home. That's one of the things we're... Oh, wait. Was that just the wrong part? Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's because I was using the wrong part. So oh, here nice. is your shell. Now, if you notice, it's a little soft. Um, turn on polygroup. And you can come in here. They are different polygroups. So if you go Control-Shift-Tap, you now have split. Uh, well, it's not split. It's hidden, right? Because now if we flip this, see there's no inside surface. So we take this, turn this back on, we project this to the external surface. So now your outside shell matches. Oh, I keep forgetting that this is only 900,000. It should do it. 
Um, so we're projecting the external shell to the actual external form, right? Boom. Um, oh, that's really funny. This is your original model. That's the, I was like, I sculpted buttocks on them, and now your buttocks are there. I'm like, what's going on? Um, oh, and see, there's the fat we added, and there's the... Okay, so <laughs> I projected to the wrong shell, but you get the idea. So now we have this. It is projected. We just control, sh control shift tap. That brings our internal shell back in. Boom. And there you go. There's your shell, and there is your thickness right there. Make sense? And then if you were going to print this, remember you need to punch a hole in it. At All least right. one hole in it. Because that'll just be full of fluid and it'll be horrible. If you, and that's not what you want. <laughs> you don't want that, trust me. Um, Unless that's what you want. Does that answer your question? It yeah. certainly, it must. I don't think you can get better than your step-by-step -step guide. You too, thank you. All right, we got yep. four more models. Awesome, thank you so much, guys. Okay, Thanks, so Mark. we have, have a nice day. let's do this one first. Talk quick, to you soon. Since we have it. Hey, see you guys, cheers. Cheers. Uh, sure. <laughs> no, Mikhail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think it is. I think that's the one you downloaded already. The ballerina. Yep, that's who's yep. next. And I believe he's in Bravo. voice chat. He or she. I hear. Oh. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I hear a, a bit sure. of clicking, but no voice. <laughs> hello, hello. Right on. There it is. Nice. I had to like turn off Discord chat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah. I'm actually excited right. for this. So like, I don't know why. Um, it's good to hear from you, Tomas. It, it's been many moons. Is is yep. it just an anatomy study? Are you playing planning to tune it to be photorealistic, or is this just a motion and form study? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's more of the anatomy study. Um, I haven't done asymmetry for like seven months sure. and this is kind of my first piece getting back into asymmetry. So it's just trying to like really, really describe like, where am I connecting these muscles? Why are they going? And so like struggling a little bit on that, sure. especially like no, of course, with of how course. the, the pelvis um, holds and yeah, stuff so like that. The and so first like I had to break down I mean, her face to a school you know, you capture just to the like gesture figure nicely. out how I'm positioning stuff. And, um, you know, I think that weight-wise, is she a little forward there? You know, it, it just positioning-wise, I think that she's probably, uh, that's just a fast way to skew. Because whenever you're doing this, you got to remember that, you know, she is on point, so she's balancing. So you got to figure that she's probably in that range. So it doesn't change the view from the front. But, you know, if this leg's cantilevered forward a little, you know, make sure to run a rail down you know, down the center. So yeah. you're finding balance. Skew is really good for that. It allows you to really kind of tune where the center is. So that's the first thing. Let's see. It's looking okay balance wise. Because her arms are back. 
you know, like this arm's short because this arm's actually back over here. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Also, I cut the hand off just because the geometry was getting funky, yeah, she was. and I decided that would be better. Yeah. Um, she's also like popping her. Oh yeah, no, she's, she's rolling her shoulder forward, kind of, and her then shoulder is her actually hand. So, like, coming in that just front makes the whole of her thing just a little bit here, more crazy to work. Which with. is, you know, I mean, that's really pushing that forward, especially when you're displacing backwards so much. It's. Uh, I lived with a choreographer for ten years or nine years, so it was. Uh, Trust me, I'm. I, I did a lot of life sculpture with dancers. <laughs> um, oh, it was great. So the only thing I'm seeing here nice. that nice must have been useful. Well, she has mitten feet. That's one thing. But um, like you said, I think the main issue here is that you've lost the tension in this intersection, this origin, right? Um, I had to actually also like transpose, yeah. cut it back because it was like it was out of proportion when I <laughs> actually like reference back to the photo, so that helped yeah. lose some tension. And then like and if you look at the photo, like it has like like you said the I mean, tension. I mean ballerinas and then have very unique definition because the like, so. they're actually trained to create muscles that do things like you know you're not actually supposed to do, and that's why ballerinas destroy their hips and ankles and knees before they're twelve. You know, I mean it's like. <laughs> Ballet is yeah. not really healthy for your body. <laughs> Crazy. This is. That's a good point. Yeah, because and this is why, like, Maria's some like, of their musculature seems and after, like, doing this, I totally in some ways. Why. Like, it's just a um, in because, a ways. especially, you got to think that <clears throat> ballerinas, everything is about turnout, right? So it's how can you get the maximum rotation out of your hips and when you're developing your muscles with that kind of over rotation out um it creates for some really interesting um graphics i guess yeah. you, could, you know i mean it's a very specific s and you know if you look uh, that's why what, this post what i love so about much, this image like, actually so is so, I, you know, when you're trying to tell people it. that, you know, in the crotch area, there's very little, there's very little when it, structural muscle, right? You know, there's this insertion, right? And then there's this insertion. And then most of this is airspace. You know, there's not a lot of muscle in here. There's, you know, the the groin muscles and the abdominal muscles, but those are all coming from up here and coming and attaching. So this really shows that lack of meat in there, right? Because this comes in and then, you know, you're dealing with your buttocks, you know? So it, I, I like that it shows that being very hard. And so oop, that's yeah. not the button I wanted to push. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Let's go back to our drawing picture. Um, no, that's not what I want. I want, wait, there you are. Nope. Uh, ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Good God. Um, so this is inserting into the hip bone, right? And so if you look, it's actually very straight. There's not much. And like here as well, right? Because there's so much tension on those two origins or insertions. I can't remember which direction they go. Sorry. Um, so when I say you've lost some of the tension there, that's really, these are really very close to straight lines. And then you see that the muscle comes off of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the truth is, is like halfway yeah. through this, I realized I didn't really know where the muscles connected as much as I thought I did. 
So uh, I ordered yeah, that no, book, Anatomy I, for School Nurses. That's why, you know, it's always just, funny like, that, like I said, you know, there are only two big like, muscle oh, man, going is, up in there. This is not what I thought muscles did or do. You know, there's just the one that, I can't remember, it's retract protest radio. My anatomy's gone. I can't remember. I'm so old and uninformed. But you can see that these are attaching to the coccyx, right? And then, you know, you get that coming out, and you can see it there. That comes back and around and out. But, you know, it leaves this big airspace here. Yeah. And because you got to think there can't be too many crossovers. You know, you have the. Um, my God. It goes from the back to the front. Um, and like what? It, yeah, I can't remember. So basically you have one group of okay. muscles that comes from the back That's like that, towards you're the like front. Speaking my language, you I have really know the your abdominal muscles, muscles that are so. all coming in here. And then your pelvis is here. And this is attaching like there. It comes down, crosses over, and, you know, makes that muscle. And then these muscles are coming down here you know so you there's just this huge airspace here because this what you get is the one that's coming from the back of the pelvic coming around to the front of the knee yeah. right and that's this stuff in here right because when you're standing see it's that muscle this muscle is this muscle here right <laughs> yeah it, yeah yeah the amount of tension it takes and she to throw your body into this position and stay like on that, too. you know, inch and a half so. by three inch block of wood um, is quite a thing. My ex made me take a point class to understand that it was torture. And you should see me in point. It yes. is absolutely one of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life. Um Oh my god, that was ridiculous. You know, these are all coming up in the here, and then you know you like have your pelvic crest, so you have like that hump of muscles that are attaching. You know, with yeah, and really it's that, and then the buttocks. You know, it's like there's not much going on in there. Going. I up wish that, I know there's a desktop version of this. I wish I had it. Um, So, so like on the buttocks, when she lifts her leg like that, it like pinches the muscle and brings it well, up it's higher because to like it's to because her stomach. That is, is actually, that why that so like you have think, in the back know, her is visible probably besides that muscle? Nineteen inches. Well, you know, <laughs> she's a skinny gal. Um, so these are coming up. Your pelvic crest is here, and these are. So, the, you know, the buttocks, if you're looking at the back, right, um, you know, you have your glutes here, and then you have the second, which is that sort of second bump when you're looking at the silhouette of the hip, you get the waist, there's like a hump there and there, right? And so this is the top of your glutes, and then that's your buttocks. So that is the top of her buttocks coming around. Now, if you look here, hold on, let's zoom in a little. zoom in a little you can actually see the buttocks happening here right so this is her glute there's the line and it's probably doing that and then that's the top there right and that's coming up sort of over and that's why you can see it there because that's your pelvic crest that's coming off of it so let's actually look. I'm sure we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got my pelvic and so, crest. You know, once again, the model, now that you mentioned think that. of it structurally. If I bring right? it down, that would solve a lot of my problems with the tool. You know, that doesn't change. And so her abs are actually coming out this way because she is rotating dramatically. You know, but it's a box, you know, so where those points are, they don't change. And so, and, and yeah, and you, 
true. Mm -hmm. I feel like <clears throat> if I was to redo this piece, I would actually start yeah. with like maybe drawing on and, top of a 2D picture like you, know, you are, I, I, and then just cutting the model up like back a way little farther just well. to have my guidelines. Because right, if that's your abdominal muscles, your 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 pelvic bones are kind of back here, right? And that's where she's getting some of that tension because you're getting that that from back over and you're not getting the depth yeah. in, right your legs inserting here and it sh this should be coming kind of like that and see that gives you much more of that tension line i know i'm being sloppy sorry but i think you'd yeah, here let me no, no, you're explaining the idea really well. It's like, yeah, it's up to me to continue doing this at the after the stream's over. So, um, <clears throat> are you only giving me bone? So let's actually this. Come on. So there's the hip bone. This is here. Come on, you're not going to show me the other side. Yes, I can. You can see that is where all that tension's coming from, right? She's rolling all of these muscles out. To where they're actually on the front if that makes any sense <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it kind of yeah. does i'm trying to visualize yeah, well, they it in my head in how each strand is just going to kind of like let start me see if i can bulge because like when I, muscles move I they also like expand and shrink at certain points access to the so desktop like, version of this um Visual anatomy, a visual, visible body, is that what it's called? Um, this is a fantastic app. Okay, so Human Anatomy Atlas, I have this. Will it let me log on here? that's that's what this does that's why i'm trying to i'm really looking for an app um, that shows you like when you well, bend an arm to like show you the animation I know of you're the not bones be able to see it, but let me nine hear. come on nervous system pelvic region show me I don't want endocrine system. Muscular system views. Hip. Hip. So I don't know if you can. Let me see if I can. All right. So it then has. Um, you can rotate it around. Okay. And you I can see the camera. See I'm going to highlight it. Boom. That's the muscle. Let me see if that. Right. And you can see that they're just the two muscles up here that contact yeah, that twists straight when into she the pelvic does that pose. bone. Come on. There you go. And now let me see yeah. if. I, I actually, get, uh, I see a lot. As you tapped it, I actually saw you selecting those. Here. So you can see that there are all these animation selections. And let's see if that's not the muscle we're looking for. These are not the muscles you're looking for.
Well, that's getting closer. So did I tap it? Did it not work? Is it going? Yeah. Um, let me see if it's moving. There you go. And so it's not radi radially rotating, but it gives you a really good idea of where the muscle groups go. And um, I'll tell you, it's, it's a super good, um, oh, there you go. That's a little better. So one sec, let me see if I can. right and i'll tell you this is this app is worth nice owning. it's great um and i know that i can log suppose yeah. i say i know i've had this for years so i don't particularly know but um you supposedly can get the desktop version but what's really cool is you can rotate it around while all this is happening and you can zoom in and so ooh, Come on, you. It gives you really exacting. You can zoom in, really look, and see what the muscles are doing at their insertions, and how they're tensing. And you know, it's it's a super useful uh, tool. Yeah. It's really funny. I guess the guy did this stuff in ZBrush. I remember I had, I had ordered the app and uh, then they, uh, they, he was showing the models and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I just bought that. <laughs> it, was in, it was on the forums or something. I saw it posted. I was like, I know that model. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. at the so summit or something like that? I would say that That's this is job. actually a super good reference material because nice. it's actually designed for anatomy courses like you it has quizzes like it'll ask you where are the 17 in origin like it's a study guide for um college level anatomy and so um it's definitely well worth um buying it, it wasn't that expensive i mean cool. i don't know how much it is for the Yeah, it it's worth they it. They have because, a student's edition and stuff um, like that. I'm pretty sure I could get my I way mean, around to like somehow afford like you know it's this insanely up. detailed. And, like, and what's nice about it, you can click one layer of muscles and get rid of them, so you can see what's happening below the top layer. You know, you can really choose exactly what you're looking at. You know, same with the armpits. You know, there you go. It's a big airspace. People. <laughs> It does. Yeah, and it is interesting how they overlap and everything like that. I feel like that's why that book, Anatomy uh -huh. for Sculptures, is good. It simplifies it. Um, I've been using the like the Google version of this app that you're like showing me, but they just don't do any motions, so it's like it's extremely limiting to like how useful it is at the same time. So like, I've been going through all the apps, and a lot of them like they'll do motion, but then they're just like uh right three D scans, so they don't like actually let you choose like which Mo like which muscles you want to move they just only show you like access. the pre-recorded ones they've done and like throw them off so no, that's i feel nothing. like this is actually pretty no, cool I, I do want to and that out is i think that's three i think that's the visual atlas that's, that's not bad it's the muscle and what is the web suite tell me which ones you have because it's three yeah they usually have the one that is anatomy physiology uh, oh, here you go. They said Following something up. about so biology. Muscle, I don't know if that's included. The anatomy or... atlas, muscle, anatomy, physiology, and physiolog physiology. <laughs> physiology, Jesus. Uh, animations. Holy Hannah, that was painful. Um, <laughs> and they actually have one that I have that is uh, the go. skeleton, and it really breaks down the skeleton um, <laughs> really tight. But this, I mean, 19 bucks for the four apps for a year, that's, that's good.
Yeah. I think when I got them, they had the lifetime member because these keep upgrading, and I haven't a, paid for them. That's so a lifetime I think investment. Worthy. When I got them, when they first came out, there was the lifetime uh, membership. I know. When I saw it, I was like, I want that. And I bought the whole, I, I bought everything. You know, I was like, nope, I'm Lucky. getting it all. Lucky. They don't have the skeleton <laughs> premium anymore. Yeah, it probably is. Um, it's not. But it's, it's, I mean, if you're trying to learn anatomy, Maybe it is well anatomy. worth it because you're allowed, or you're, you're allowed, you're able to, like I said, go through, look through it, it's really fascinating. You know, it's really, um, and what's funny is the anatomy physiology is actually kind of cool because it, um, it, like, it shows you all of the systems and the little animations on how it work. And they have the pathology. So it shows you, like, if, like, if someone says, oh, you know, I have this, they actually have a detailed breakdown of what's actually happening in the body. Because, you know, these are anatomy, for anatomy classes and for medical school. So it has all the pathology stuff. And it it's actually quite fascinating to see what the diseases are and what they're actually doing. And they have the little animation yeah. showing you. And you're like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> um, but well worth 19 bucks. You know. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad I talked to you today because, like, I've been going through all the apps, like, literally this past two, three days and, like, haven't bought any. But, like, if I am going to buy one. Yeah, it's weird because, I mean, this, this one is. Like, and I didn't even see this I mean, one pop up, which kind of makes me mad. It's like, like, it, like, a like list in of 10, one of the things never, like, I don't know which program one. it is. It, it really, it asks you all the test questions and you have to pin it in the right place. And, I mean, like, it is a full anatomy physiology course. It's tied to courses. So, uh. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's like, no, it's crazy. And when I saw it, it was like, you know, I think I paid like, it's like a thousand 25, dollars. 30 bucks <laughs> for to... everything forever. You know, and I was just like, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> now, and because I knew that I could sign on to the desktop, but now that they split things out, I don't know that I can mm -hmm. get the desktop with this. I have to call them or email them and ask. Um, but. It's a really good system. Yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're good. good. Yeah. Good to I feel good. like that's just an opportunity to, right for, like, for them to sponsor you or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Also, about you talking earlier about your computer, I was like, I'm, I'm running a 16 gigabyte stick of RAM in my whole entire build. A single stick, not even <laughs> dual channel. Right, and I'm just like, God, I really need to like step up my game here, like, because I have a Ryzen that's just beefy and it can handle a lot. But, like, my <laughs> well, it was so funny like, when we got this one because I needed us. something <laughs> like, so to now hold us over like, until I got the machine. It, like eventually, and, like, uh, <laughs> we were like, oh, you know, we'll put my video card in it, and you know. We'll upgrade the RAM. Nope. My video card is... The footprint of my video card is bigger than the footprint of this computer. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we're not going to do that, are we? Uh, but honestly, you know... Nice. It's been great for streaming, you know, for a five-year-old or four-year-old or however old it is, little hot box it does okay <clears throat> it actually performed much better than we thought it would we've been very surprised and happy with it it did yeah i think i think with right. this and with um with sculptor for anatomy worked out sculpture for anatomy will allow you to recognize the basic shapes and then when you see something you don't understand the anatomy book is very or the this is very, very helpful. <clears throat> In depth, yeah. And I'm finding I'm finding that like just having references of a photo is not enough or like a book is not enough. You need like to branch out and like well, literally and that, like track down each And that's the thing is that like what, it paints the picture in your head. Forget. Otherwise you're like 
just wasting time anatomy the wrong thing is and, that like, describing it, it isn't smooth it's very very rigid right i mean if this is a flexing muscle there is an insertion there is an origin and that muscle is a straight damn line between it right and then you get the muscle bulk you know whatever the shape of the muscle you know but you know this is tendon it doesn't flex it's going right to you know wherever it is and then however that muscle bulks if it's flexed it's doing one thing if it's relaxed it's doing another you know and um it, it it's quite fascinating it's really interesting you know because this is the bottom of your box and these muscles are doing that you know it's attaching to the peak of the pelvis and you know it's coming up and in and that's why she has this big ridge here because there, but there's just nothing there you know i mean that but you don't know that when it's lying down because all these are now folding on top of one another you know that's crossing over from back there this is all this little v and then this is this muscle right yeah. coming down over and around but she's losing that twist around because she's rotating this up and out and that's why the anatomy gets so weird with um dancers yeah and if you're building it at a box right if you're building this as a Ballet, box ballerina. yeah you're going to understand a little bit better where these things line up right you know if you know that your box is doing x you know that that's you know that that's the corner where you know that right the hip joint yeah where the top and bottom pretty much meet because like your entire rib cage just connects to the pelvic bone the top of it and then all your leg muscles connect just straight to that pelvic bone too the bend and that's where you can see that you know your buttocks is too high because it's coming to the middle of the rib cage right Yeah. Yeah, no, you're just a little out of position because you're think you're matching the photo, you're not thinking of the anatomy. Don't work that way, does it? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to cheat and just like use the photo for the proportions wise. Like no, I, I made it, it actually made it a completely yeah. flat image, and I barely got it like, to look 3D just no, recently. I like, just it, like, Come on. No, I should have not stop. taken that seven month oh. break. Like, is all I'm gonna say. Oh, like, geez. it did not help. Because you know, this is. These are things that I just love when you're just going off photos. And I mean, we all do it. I'm not saying you. But let's measure your arm here. Why? So from short of the wrist, you are 0.96, right? So I'm going to put a append star. I'm going to take that star, W, make it tiny. And I'm just going to drag it up here and put it at the height of the wrist. So that is our visual cue for where the wrist is right so now i'm going to come here <laughs> oh my god she leans backwards so like well, I mean, the whole it's, perspective it's, it's oh not a god. you know everyone does it. like i mean i would probably start and, here, oh my god i feel you know what i mean try to match but what's funny is so now <laughs> let's do this so we're going to go why and we said that was nine six. Yeah, nine six, I think. So we're gonna come here, drag this out, and let us something nine, yeah. Drag that out to 
a bit too much. Let's drag it back down a little. Nine six is right there. Okay, so our arm length is nine six, right? So now what we need to do is drag this back until the visual is correct. And so that is nine nine. We'll drag that back down to be eh, close enough nine five. So now you can see that her arm is, is the right angle, but now it's the right length. And that allows her to counterbalance, right? That and is the counterbalance, which is allowing her to rock a little forward on her toe, right? But that changes that dramatically, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Right, so it's funny how like how little you do, but like that how much is explaining your arm length differentiation. Like, oh my God, they got to put this then, up to the crit. <laughs> what's funny is you flatten the rib cage a little. I, I started doing flattening it a lot, like especially if you compare the pictures, because like I didn't have the right hip placement, so it kept right. just like everything kept throwing me off because like she's putting all her weight on that like one point, so like if I don't have that point correct, the chest just looked completely and off. This and actually, so I I was working no, on the wrong play, part move. and like ended up this like, actually working against is myself, out a little like farther, taking down the Because you got to figure once again, let's look at bones, right? Um, hold on. Let's rotate this first. Yeah, let's take it as if it were front on. <clears throat> Your clavicles are raising, but you know, this bone, where is it sitting, right? These are pinching up a little high. Right, and you know you you got to look at where your um, oh my god now I can't even remember what your shoulder plate's named. This is my life right now. Um, right. See how all this is coming up? Well, that would be her deltoid right there. <laughs> you know? So, it. I think that what will help you greatly is if you do use um, a mannequin, like a base form. So you can set it up, twist it, hold it, and that allows you to, and I, I haven't really used um, the mannequins that are the Z spheres in here, but I have a, a few base bodies that are broken up into parts, and it's just a hip, a rib cage, you know, ankles, but it allow or <laughs> ankles. And this big ankle right here. Um, but it allows you to sort of see what's happening in the torso. Um, yeah, like the one yeah. they have the, with the ZBrush is just a giant well, circle sphere. But I, for I the, find uh, for the that's hip. why I don't so use the mannequins like, is because they're round. Honestly, the mannequin I used didn't right. really help me. Where I probably you, use it right and I have a much either, simpler so, like, version, but let's it. look at Shane real quick. Um, like his stylized uh, character class, he teaches this sort of block up where you make all of the parts and then you shape them. But you can see that they, the breasts are separate, shoulders, arms the side, the pelvis, and the hips. And when you start to pose this, right, you are seeing where those things are moving and staying. And it gives you a, a much better idea of when you start to pose, you're, you're rotating these things. And so you don't lose the relationship between them, if that makes sense.
Well, and especially if you're not super comfortable honestly, with your anatomy. Like I mean, if you look like at Steve Lord's sculpt, I mean, he just, just pukes the stuff like out. He's just like, Bleh! and you're like, <laughs> whatever I watch Steve sculpt, I'm just like, oh, good you bastard. <laughs> Honestly, you and Steve are the ones that like showed me like ZBrush is the way for me to go. Yeah. Like I remember early on, like before meeting you in LA, I was like, yeah, I, I saw one of your clips come out, and you're just like, I just bumped this up way up high in poly count, and then work like you know ZBrush meshing down. I was like, this is revolutionary to me. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah. But, I mean, and then Steve I watched knows his the other I mean, day, Steve and he did, like it was the same thing. He's like, I, I just mean, cut it like slow and just not amazing. even care. But he's, uh, they're guys. And we went to so, Cal like, Arts together. And, uh, even then, like, you know, because he was in the animation school, and good God, he's a talented dude. I mean, just just look at that; it's just ridiculous, and he just kicks it out. I mean, it's uh, it's just uh, it's just so good. But you yeah. can see that he really grasps; he really understands that concept of where insertion and origin. You know, I mean, his. Yeah, it's just a... Yeah, it just... And it describes, it describes the the form of it very well, too. Oh, it looks like if he you, like, uses insert the it, then you can put mannequins. the S-shape and, like, go through instead of just, like, throwing an S-shape and, like, trying there. to mimic the muscles. I'm realizing it's, like... Oh, he just makes me cry. I should have just made my own Z Sphere mannequin for the ballerina instead of using like one of the pre built ones and trying to position it later on. Or something. I don't know. Because it was, it was pretty hard for me to like, for this piece, because it, it came out so flat looking that like I yeah. ended up using like more time just to yeah, like, no, it, evolve you know, the 3D. It really that, just like, comes just down. Because kind of, like, what's funny, I mean, if you think about it, like, the whole there's, anatomy coming off. I mean, there's so much going on. But. In all reality, once you wrap your head around, even if you don't know that there are nine muscles here, and you just know that really this is a rectangle of basically three shapes, right? You have sort of this going on. And then, you know, that and that, that, which then kind of does that, that, what kind of does that. You know, you if you just even understand that much, you have a huge advantage, right? You have an understanding of what's kind of happening there. And that is where I think the sculptor, sculpting for anatomy does what, and it's, you know, I think he learned from Bridgman and just kind of turned it into something that wasn't quite so ridiculous as Bridgman stuff. But you know, there's that secondary glue, you know, and once you learn how to identify the forms, if you know the forms, you'll slowly creep into the true anatomy, right? Because that's the whole thing with live, like, why do we, why does everyone say you should take life drawing? Well, why you should take life drawing is because, let's take Ritson, you know, you're going to go, okay, this is oval and uh, peak. You get a neck, your clavicles, Steve. your rib cage. Shoulder, shoulder, forearm. And you start to, in life drawing, what you start to do is identify your geometry, right? Your, it lets you come to grips with these shapes that make up the human body. Right. I mean, we know that the leg does this sort of, and then it comes in like that, kind of does that, and goes into the knee. Right. You start to identify these abstract forms. And as soon as you can break this up into the abstract form and make it feel like it is, um, you know, you now know that the forearm's heavier here, kind of back there, bicep sort of does that, tucks in. 
breast comes from the same place, their pec muscles, their breast muscle, well, your breast fat, um, right? Yeah, but most of the breast, you have your pectoral muscle, you know, but most of the breast is fat. Um, this this tissue of muscle underneath it. Or fatty, t at least breasts that big, or fatty tissue. Um, yeah. Where Michelangelo would draw <laughs> this with uh, with an orange. <laughs> there we go. That's Michelangelo's women. <laughs> right there. That, that's don't, a Michelangelo woman. Don't start. Woman. Not the Michelangelo. <laughs> Just, uh, no, no, no. We'll be here for an hour. Well, it's because well, my they didn't Latin look at nude women. Like, that's and why. And you <laughs> that, like, back then I don't think Michelangelo ever saw how the ball sacked than the actual breast tissue. <laughs> like that makes you wonder. I, I can prove it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have pretty tangible evidence. No, we're not going to oh, go there. We're not going to. Oh do shoot! It. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Was it last week that we went? Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah, but it, but Henry, we're sorry. All right, just forgive us. Well, th no, they're. Oh my God! They're brilliant, Michelangelo sculptures. Michelangelo they're for horrible like women. Minutes. They're men with. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know how bad they are, Google sort of cut yourself. three quarters no, off and then not. suction cupped to the body. They're really bad. I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. I think maybe one of the reasons is that is it's well, you have to look at a woman. Like over, I mean, that's really the key. Like buff it, you know, muscles, I, I and then like try to go down to the feminine form. You have to like really make it subtle and like cut it down so much. So like, it's just easy. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. <laughs> just, just, just oh. Google Michelangelo <laughs> female. Skulls. Just Google it for yourself. You don't have to. You don't have to. And you're going to feel really good about it. We can just work on this. Because <laughs> at least it has curves. <laughs> yeah, the curves. curves. That was they, that 2019 talk of Zebra Summit. It was like, everybody's like, yeah, curves. Totally They're attractive. Right. Like, if I didn't have curves, I didn't learn anything Is from this that the summit. Right these three other models you didn't put any of them in the okay <clears throat> four oh. no yeah they're all there um and the folder right above that there's there's one more Boop. see Drinking all that caffeine and sugar water, I'm not tired. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't drink soda. I, I literally, I went probably seven years without having I a soda. I agree with the caffeine. And then, um, not so much with the <laughs> and then the other day, no uh, because my stomach, I drank some ginger ale. And then tonight I went to grab some ginger ale. Cause yes. It really does. I It's crazy. I would never believe it but my stomach's been bothering me and ginger ale really just boop it it calms it down it's crazy but i knew that i was i mean i got here at what like five and i was tired i was kind of by the time we launched i was pretty nappy and so i went and got <laughs> i don't know whatever liter of coke and just hammered it and um yeah i'm not tired <laughs> Yeah. In two hours, I might go into a sugar caffeine coma. But, <laughs> uh, you know, that is what it is. Yeah, yeah I'm still like, awake and conscious. Uh, okay, so all that is downloading. So, yeah, I think really what you need to do, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't even necessarily toss what you have here, but I would do a rudimentary. When are you getting the book? Oh, good. Okay, because I was going to say, um, work it's coming. At, I have a PDF, real quick. Like, um, pri but it's pirated. So I bought the book, and it's coming in tomorrow. No, so, 
anatomy for sculptors. Um, work at this level. Like this level right here, you know, just get the directionality I, I, and look, the block. I feel like right? if I'm working on this, um, where's the one that shows the the rib cage breakout? And uh, one sec, yeah, here. This is what you want to be wrapping your head around, right? Where is that hip bone hitting? How is your pelvis touching? Where is that origin insertion? And if you get the anatomy thing, you know, you can actually put hot spots on where those muscles are actually touching, right? Because, you know, here, they have the one that's just, but work in this range right here. And that's going to help you get so build like this shape build a pelvis um i wouldn't okay. worry about building because you know that this is this shape and it fills in from here to here wherever those two points are you know that that shape fills it in right so i wouldn't even bother putting that in my um in your armature and then just <clears throat> rough bones don't worry about you know i'd make them a little thicker than a bone but Lockout. you know just have a, okay. a tube for legs you don't have to get super anatomical because you're working on what you need to know is where this point is because that is hold on you know when you're looking at the anatomy that's this you know, you see that bone, right? Because there's no meat right there. It's just bone. So you need to know where that point is. You want to know where your hip bone is actually sitting. Stretch. Right? Because that shows where the leg starts to pivot from. You want to know your vertebrae. And I would probably put a ball for where your arm starts. Just so you know that that is actually where the bone is right there, right? Um, but keep that, keep it simple and think oh here you go this is the one i was looking for right okay because if you have that box that box is showing you this is that pelvis bone right and then you know you can give yourself a little ridge just so you know where these muscles start right because this does tilt back right your pelvic bone is behind that face so you know that way you know where this is and you know where this is and as you rotate it around and twist it that's going to fill in this shape you know this is just a kidney bean shape sort of you know it's just um yeah yeah and it's got a, like a layer of fatty tissue usually in front of it even like thin people so it's easy to describe it. It's like once you get the right. pelvic bone you lost correct and whatnot. Where so, like I feel like this is why I struggled is, with this piece specifically. So in turn, you I, I didn't like nail floundered. in my, you know, it was my out there and pelvic bone and, and stuff like that. Brr. But right. Yeah. And I ended up erasing like a ton of anatomy I've done over it because I realized like this anatomy is just not connecting to the right places because yeah yeah Whew. well I mean thank you for taking this like you know undeveloped piece and just critiquing it yeah like no, yeah, I got what I wanted no guidance to where to go in fact like, if you don't know your anatomy like, it's the, the simple only fixes, way to deal they with actually things, right? there are a lot like, you know, you know once again here it's like well it's what's like happening so it's a compliment well that's a muscle going down it cuts in here but if you don't know there's really nothing in there you know you're you're trying to fill it in with something that isn't there and then it doesn't make any sense and you're like ah so you know i just think that if you're working in this kind of structure right and i'd say that's even you know a little schmancy for what you need to do you know simplify it and you know like this line it's so funny because you know this part of the torso 
is only connected down here. You know, this leg is really free of a lot of muscles, you know, of their insertions and origins. Like this is overlapping and you get the overlapping of the spine in the back. And then there are two little groovers that come in over here like that. But it's, you know, there's not a, I mean, it really is two pretty separate sets of muscles, you know. There really is a lower body and an upper body, and they really don't interact that much. So um, I think that that'll help you yeah. if you just look at that as, if you're looking at it at that blocking level, it'll give you the freedom to actually analyze analyze the pose a little better. And once you get the pose set up, um, <laughs> I think you need to start Correct. here with the elephant head. I think that's going to really help your pose and you'll understand balance a lot better. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're, oh my God. I like it. This uh, guy's my favorite. That's pretty cool, though. But my friend wants me to do trippy art like this. I'm like, no, I, I gotta yeah. start. <laughs> oh God, this just gets trippy. Talented. A Talented. dolphin man. Oh man, he's really good at describing yeah. anatomy, though. Right on. It's the crazy thing. What? Look at that. That's a great anatomical yeah, study. <laughs> I think the duck man is our signal. That it is time to move on. I am sorry. <laughs> it's a dolphin. I know, and if I let you keep going, you'll outline torso. Yeah, no. I, sadly, if I worked on his <laughs> model, I would actually have to He's like, kind of redo it. I just it, want him so. to like work on your um, model. <laughs> like, for Christ. I'm like, sorry. Dude, yeah, he's helping yeah. me a lot. No. <laughs> I'll I'll blow this again. So don't worry. Yep. I'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. No next drama. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Standard's high. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have another project I should be working on. This was something I was like, uh, oh, God. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Peace. Okay, Sorry. We're downloads. Have a good one. <laughs> downloads. Wow. It's a name? The file that begins with the letter E is next. I fear I trying to pronounce that I'm no name. good at pronouncing things. I'm not a pronouncer. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Uh, they are... Yeah, me neither. They are in the Discord. Um, they haven't joined voice chat. I don't know if they plan to or not. Interesting. It's sort of like a single-headed cerebus. <laughs> Are they going to join? Okay. They just did. Um, you'll want to mute either Twitch or YouTube, whichever one you're watching on, Hello. Uh, so that you can talk in discord so first of all how do you pronounce your name okay hello okay okay so i was close <laughs> okay i was my just name is Olga, uh, and, uh, i was trying to pronounce things it's sad it's, it's, it's just different. tragic I, i'm very bad <laughs> very cool so <laughs> three little sort of Double wolf face. I'm liking it. It's a nice model. Your balance is good. Uh, just for ring, just ring notes, I would um, knock these up a little. So whenever you have something pointy, get it away from the finger. Point it up and away, just so it doesn't turn into a... Uh, a horrible fish hook into your hand and then as far as wearability goes I think you're okay once again I would tend to try to figure out how to keep these from being sharp edges because if you if it's a hot day 
and your fingers start to swell and you try to move it on, those can turn into, you know, just shovels and take knuckles off and it's really a horrible situation. Um, all right. And like I said, just try to knock that edge off. And you know, you can come in and accent the hair so it continues around and stuff. I'm just trying to give you a shape there. Now, here we go with layers. So you have a pretty distinct form. And once again, style is style. I'm not, if you know, you're like, no, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Ignore what I'm saying. I'm just, these are regular themes and it's just, you know, I've made models and this is what works and doesn't for me. So um, what I would say is, and I understand how you're integrating the eye in here, but I think that you probably want just a little bit more separation where it's behind the ear just a touch, where the ear sets here, because it drags that ear back and around a little bit, and it just looks a little forced to me, where if you just knocked it back, it's now allowed you're now sort of selling the anatomy as well as the story, and, and that is, this is now your brow line, right? And so it's going to um, sit as if it were behind the brow. And, you know, you can then pump up your hair or design however you want. But I just think that little bit of twist and knocking it back and under is going to help some. Now, as far as the hair and stuff goes, <coughs> it you have really good rhythm. It's really nice. The only thing I would say is all of it is at the same level because you've, well, here, let's, I now have my little dry thing, right? You have, this is going from here to here. All of the hair winds up at this level, like you have this flat spot, right? and everything is kind of coming to it and then everything is sort of half round so what your surface is looking like from the side is sort of this and then it goes like this and this and goes like this and this and it goes like this and nothing's really at a different level so this is kind of what I, I consider drawing on surfaces when I'm t when I use that that's sort of what I'm talking about here where you're not getting any transitional depth and the thing about hair is usually it's in plaits, right? Where you have, um, you know, the crown hair, and then this is coming under it, and then you have a layer under it, and that falls down. So like a lion mane, right, isn't just an afro. You know, it's not just one full layer. What you have is you have the face, and then you sort of have the face hair, and then behind that, you have your main puff up. But then there you have a, one that comes down the chest, probably in about two layers, right? It's not just one mat of, or one puff of hair. It's plaits of hair laying on top of one another. And when you do things where it's all just coming down to the same level, you lose that. And when you make this, right, what you're going to have, these are going to read as nice, bright surfaces, and these are going to look as dark lines. But the second you get like four feet away from it, it actually flattens it out. It's very weird. It doesn't seem like, that seems counterintuitive. But in a lot of ways, if you make your detail a little flatter, or at least that it has a layer or a, a distinctive reflective surface, and then you have one that's lower and then one that's lower. It reads incredibly well and it reads from much farther away. It doesn't just turn into chatter. So I'm a little worried that this would turn into chatter. And so my suggestion for resolving it would be to define some layers, right? And so how do we define our layers? Well, we're going to say this one is, let's not back here and look. So this is a brow, and you, I'm viewing that sort of as the fur coming up off of this area and kind of flowing back. And it looks like, you know, this 
here's your brow shape. This might be a little higher. This might be a crest there, and then this is kind of coming back like that. And then this is sort of the brow or the crest, and that's coming back. And then that's where you're intersecting with some of the other parts, your horns. Um, so this is sort of three layers to me. I can see it in three layers. And I'm just going to do one side. Let's make sure to turn symmetry off so we can look at this. And I'm going to fill some of this in. No, oh, that has gravity on it. I'm like, what is that doing? So we're going to say this is one layer. This is another layer. And then this is the third layer. And so now I'm going to flatten this out a touch and have that going behind these two layers. This is this layer. That goes behind that. This is distinctly on top of it. And I'm not doing this to flatten your your style out. I'm just trying to get you to understand the the basic structure, I guess. And then this is sort of that. All right. So this will do that way. We'll knock that back a little bit more. I'm going to fill this out a touch, knock that back so it actually looks like it's traveling behind it. <coughs> this is your lower eye socket thingy above. That's that. Your ears here. Top layer and second layer. Okay, so I've broken it, broken it up into layers. Okay, so now clay tube, and we'll start with our bottom layer. Is that a different, uh, this is different poly groups, isn't it? Okay, that's why that's doing, no, that's not what I want to do. That's the other poly group. I'm like, what is that weirdness? Poly groups is what it is, okay. So, when I start to visualize the stuff, I'm going to come up. I'm going to set the rhythm of what I'm looking for, and you have sort of this going on. And I'm simplifying your forms. I'm not, I'm just kind of showing you how I kind of visualize things. So, And you can see that I'm doing it backwards where this lower stuff within each plat, there are layers as well. And then we're going to come to this guy, and that's what you're doing here. Okay. Okay. And then this is. And we get one, two, three. And 
something that is kind of coming up. Let's turn this up so I'm using a little bit more material. Sort of going that way. Uh -huh. Knock that down. Knock that down. And then that sort of its own little groove in there. Okay, so you can see reflectively here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that one. I meant to do one half. Sorry, I don't think we'll look that good. Uh, we can just do this. Boop, come back. Come on. Uh oh. Don't do it. You can do it. I love it when I do things that. I don't know if my computer can handle and it dies. <laughs> so do you have any verbal questions while we're waiting for this to do the silly thing that I just asked it to do? <laughs> <laughs> this might take a minute. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to hold down control tap this. That's now my history state. Let's come back out. get overly excited and start tapping it and making it do things that it doesn't want to do. <coughs> and like I said, the real reason for this is, so and I showed you, or I showed them the picture earlier of this thing that I was working on. And uh, where's art station? And it was actually a pretty good Good example. Uh, nope, I need my site. Come on. Mm. Oh, there it is. So, what the top of your head is going to wind up looking like is something like this where you just have bright lines and dark shadow. You have no depth as far as it is. And you can have depth there, but you can see that it really flattens it out if all you have is shapes, these bubbly shapes that aren't layers. These all go back to a singular depth. And, you know, you can see here I know this is much more stylized than what you're doing, but I think you can recognize that this is all going back to one layer, right? It's all going back. The ground is all the same level and everything comes off of that ground. There's not a lot of layers here. And what that winds up looking like is just line drawings, right? It just looks like this bubbly. Now, if that's what you're going for, great. You know, I'm not, no one's saying it's wrong or right. It's just where here, if we change where that ground level happens, it will change, it will become a much more dynamic piece. Now, hold on, let me go to my history brush. And I am just going to take this back. So I am only doing half. All right, there we go. Okay. So coming back in. And now I'm just sort of defining reflective planes, like the directionality that I want out of my hair. And then you can come back in and start to define your forms like you have them, right? Let me get standard, let me turn it down. And I'm just gonna try to draw these forms 
similarly. A little too much, I think. Okay. And so we have a pretty distinct shape here. We have a, I'm going to change that a touch just so we accent that layer. So we're going to do something like that. sort of a three-pronged attack there and oops shoot 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 uh, that comes out and we'll give it one more going to use clay tubes because instead of half rounds I'm going to create things that have facets that are going to reflect in different angles so it's going to give you a little bit more complexity in your reflection um, so let's come up here I'm going to turn that up a little more So you can see already just by defining these forms with flat surfaces, I can really give a more dynamic reflection story. And since this is going into metal, you have to remember that you are sculpting in light. It's not just the forms, you're sculpting in how those reflections are going to work. All right, and now this is thingy there. There's a thingy there. And a thingy there. Hmm. And this is going to dive back in that mix, ain't it? Hmm. So let's run the history book. Hmm. And I know we have multiple poly groups here, so my surfaces are going to be a little more messy than yours. edge coming back and under and so now we're going to come here do the next layer that is distinctly going to set on top of that one
you can see I'm just trying to think of them as layers and what's going in front and what's going behind. And so you can see as a reflective surface, and I haven't cut these back and in yet, but this is going under this one. That's under that one. That's under that one. So you can even do this style as long as you're going back to something that is a separate layer. And these will start to reflect differently. Let's see if we can get a good reflective pattern here. So see how this is, you lose depth. By making that much depth, you're actually losing the visual keys or that visual reference of the depth. This is just going to turn into chatter, right? Because see how these are the same thicknesses and the same half rounds. You can see, let's just move this back. It turns into this visual chaotic chowder, chatter. And the other thing, it starts to look wormy because it's half round, so all you're gonna do is get the highlights on the top edges of these. So they're gonna look like a bunch of tubes and it's gonna to start to look like worms or finger, half rounds, all you know, tubes sitting on top of one another. Where if you start to come over here, you can see that because these are different layers and they're reflecting at different angles, instead of just dark with hot spots, you're getting these are reflecting as a plane that plane is selling this as a separate part if this were a little bit better of a fold that would read a separate part and then this reads in front of that going back and under this is going to tell a better story in metal reflectively um, and it actually stays more all right you can see here that eye dropping back distinctly. And if you now use this, you know, anatomically, sort of what happens, you also, you're starting to get the fullness of the face above, right? It's not just that little ridge. And you're telling this eye st story as well, right? This is one layer, that's another layer. and it's actually going to read much clearer looking there and then looking here right half round half round half round half round they're all the same depth and they're all very close to the same size scoot out turns into chatter if you're thinking of layers you're going to get a cleaner more concise reflective surface. And then when you come in, I would use SK twist, you can come in and really start to define these forms. You know, I'm trying to get a similar sort of pillowy fill to it you can get this to be very stylized and as long as you don't get these double reflections you're making sure these look flatter at that back point 
you know, we can still get this stuff to look, if you want that pillowiness, that's fine. But I would do it unevenly. Have one side heavier and have one side tuck. Have one side heavier, have one side tuck. Don't get that double reflection edge. And by making them not half rounds and making one side heavier, you're changing the reflection angle and it becomes a complex reflective surface, which will read more dynamic. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I, you know, it, it <laughs> I had someone actually go, it, get kind of aggravated with yeah, me because yeah. She said that all I ever That's do is right. say people should sculpt in layers and stop drawing on surfaces. And I was like, well, if people stop drawing on surfaces and sculpting in layers, I wouldn't have to say it all the time. But, um, and you know, obviously, I'm not matching your weight and flow very well. But I think that this at least gives you an idea of how if you go back and you're very consistent with the size of your half rounds, and they're all going back to the same depth, it just becomes chatter, you know. Hey, Tomas, real quick. Uh, it seems like your Is that audio better? has gotten a lot quieter uh, in this stream. <clears throat> uh, I don't think anything changed. But, uh, but you all can't hear me? Did you like up any OBS or something? No. <laughs> um, is that better? Uh, chat, I turned it up a lot. How's that? Start talking for them to know. Just a little better? Okay. Well, let's crank it up. My little preamp. Look, I'm redlining, guys. Okay. I'm like... I, you want me to like blow everything out? Look, we're redlining. Does that matter? Oh, all of a sudden, much better. Yep. Uh huh. Okay. I hey, have it. While you're in there, hey, hey, real quick. Uh, you see desktop audio? I have the window open. In that box that you're in. Uh, click. Mm hmm. For desktop audio. Uh, it's gonna open. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> go to properties. No, I know. I'm totally joking. Okay. Use device timestamps. Uncheck it. I did. Okay. Click OK. And okay. Continue talking. What does that do? Uh, the audio has been really out of sync the whole stream. Um, it sounds like you and the person you're talking to are talking over top of one another because OBS is adding a significant delay to the audio coming out of Discord, but it's not adding a delay to you. So they get halfway done their question, and then you just start talking right over top of them. That's super weird. Unchecking that should resolve. Cool. You may never see <laughs> But thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, I mean, is that is that helpful? I mean, is that... <laughs> I never know. I was like, well, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, it's really helpful. I tried to... To do the hairs, uh, I don't know, ten times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just uh, smooth, uh, smooth everything, and then just do again. And I couldn't find this. Uh, um, I just uh, found the reference where where the um, hairs was um, done like this. Sure. And but but. Uh, uh, I, I can see now that uh, the eyes uh, <clears throat> um, are not so de distinctive uh, in my part, in my half of the model, and your part is great. It's yeah, it much, much better. Well, it's funny because it it seems counterintuitive, and uh, to be deadly honest, I found it counterintuitive. I built this Mayan ring for Form Labs um, as a it was really a print test, right? Where the beginning at the front 
everything was very deep and you know had a lot more bubble to the forms and and then when we got to the back things got smaller and they got flatter and it's crazy the small flat stuff is actually clearer than the big bubbly stuff and it all comes down to reflection right because you know right here if we're looking at this you know you have a hot spot right here you have a hot spot right here you have this hot spot right here you have this hot spot right here you have your hot spot right here hot right, right here 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 your eyeballs around so you get like this one like here one like here and you get here and here right it's just the hat so if you have a a, a shape like this the only way it can reflect is like a little bar of hot spot, right? It doesn't give you a full round because it has curve. That curve reflects just with that bar of the oval hot spot. Now, when you come around and you start doing things in flat, you start to realize that actually my hot spots here and my hot spot is all along this flat. My hot spots along this flat. My hot spots along this flat. And it's no longer just the highlights, but you're reflecting these planes. And then you just put little steps in it. I mean, in the back of that Aztec ring or the mine ring, I, it's less than a tenth of a millimeter steps. And you can see them. I mean, as clear as day, you can see the shapes. And they're basically flat and so instead of getting hot spots that are here, I'm kind of doing things like this and then putting a ridge on it. And what I'm getting is when it's at this angle, I'm getting a, all of this is reflective, right? And then when you just move it a little, all this is reflective. Oh, and you get this hot spot where here you're only going to get the hot spot on the edge of the angle you know your your reflective angle becomes very limited on a curve so if you start thinking about sculpting in light and you start with a very rigid block up you know where you're like okay so i'm going to block this up i have a brow and my brow i want to reflect you know i want this to be one reflective surface then i want this to be a reflective surface i want this behind this to be a reflective surface and i want this stuff to be behind those two i want that to come up i want that to come up i want that to be there and now you can actually start to see how this model is going to reflect beyond that uh, assuming this piece were sulfur can you speak to the difference that it would show from one side to the other? Yeah, yeah let me see if I can find something that's a, an example. It's a lot easier to see than it is to... Do I have something in ArtStation that's a good example? Hold on, let me... Sorry. Bad example. Well, here's a prime example of half rounds, right? <laughs> you're, all you're seeing is the highlights. Now let's see. Okay. Um, this is, does it not get bigger than that? Darn. Well, this is actually a pretty good example of losing dimensionality, right? because i sort of have this plane here but you can see all this is just once again it's just squiggly right it's all roughly the same height it's all roughly um the same width and depth so it's just if you look at the sculpt the sculpt looks cool in the computer right you know it's interesting it has depth there's a lot going on right it looks like it's layers it's not it's just a big bunch of squirrels, and you lose a lot of like this kind of form going on up here um you know you it, it just it doesn't work now i think that the um the armor bracelets work pretty good uh, let's look at well, let's look at this where you can see 
these are layers and they read us oh hold on let's go to the metal ones because there's a lot more stuff going on there right you know you can still see you know this is still me developing my ideas right but you can still see i have these big bright edges it makes this look like it's a scoop it doesn't look like they're tears right so when it's sulfured you start even here this is a failure this looks like this is deeper than that right because this is a darker lip and it actually looks like the level's going the other direction and it's not this is well above that it's just that these are deep this is super bright so that looks like it's very very deep this surface looks like it's lower well hold on i have a pencil <laughs> you know this surface right here looks like it's actually lower than that surface it's not it's just how this is sulfured and i don't have layers where if this was a smoother transition where you got where it was more like this see how you're seeing the transition of these layers here but you look here but look at this sulfur where you lose all that interest and all you get is this bright edge so this is but i'm starting to develop my layering here right you can sort of see it here we're getting to that direction but i was still putting these bright edges on it and the bright edge actually destroys the layering and that doesn't even make sense because you're actually getting more separation but visually you're losing that separation because you can't tell where it is on both sides right all you see is that line you can't see that i mean these are very clearly on top of one another you know and once you sulfur it you can't see it so let's see there's got to be something that just doesn't suck right <laughs> there's gotta be um most of this stuff's over polished but it's not bad so here let me see if i can find mm. yeah no this stuff is all just blasted over polished mm, let's see let's see Henry, we really need to find photos and fill out art station. <laughs> yeah, well, the printer will be here Thursday. I'm going to start printing and casting just every model of yours I can find. Cool. Uh, so now here, here's a pretty good example, right? We have all of that hash marking, right? Because it's the same style. It's for the same company. It's the same line of jewelry. We're using very similar vocabularies. But this is actually really deep looking for how tiny this is like i said that's an eight millimeter ball this is small detail and look because that bright edge blends out and because see the bright edges are there but the lip isn't so high right where the lip is high here this is going under that and you really start to get these transitions and i wish we had a picture of this sulfur from the side because this side detail well, you can sort of see it here. The side detail just reads beautifully. Um, here, let me show it to you. And you can sort of see how we start to define the layers, right? This is definitely falling back. These are dark edges, but this is pretty shallow, so you get a good thing there. Now, this comes around, and I intentionally wanted this to look like a linear graphic because this all is above. So this is polished, and this slowly gets darker as it comes back and in. Um, now let's go to Instagram, actually. I think you might have covered it. Yeah, but there wasn't a good example. Okay this is the aztec ring and now even here you can see how blown out this is and when we get to the low oh that's not the whole thing oh well actually i know i don't want to see related accounts where are all the pictures am i uh, just a big ding dong oh well all right fine it appears i've covered it <laughs> i'd say so 
Okay. What, are you getting bored? Am I boring you there? No, I just know we have more files. Well. I think you described it pretty well. Yeah. And so, just really quickly, let me just do this one more thing here to kind of wrap your head around this. So with SK Twist, I tend to use it for etching, and this is why. Because as I come in, and I'm doing this pretty big and overblown, what it's doing is it's giving me this scoop, right? The silhouette of SK Twist is this, right? We're getting this kind of roll over and down. But what this allows us to do is I'm going to take SK Clay Fill and I'm going to fill in behind it. And then I'm going to take it, hold down Alt, and I'm going to remove this reflective lip. Now do you see what just happened there? We now have a very clean step and our reflective story is telling the same thing. So let's undo that. And you can see what happens, and this is what happens when people just cut detail in, is what you create is the second reflective surface right here. So you get this and it's bright, but then you get this weird second bright line. And this weird second bright line removes layer context. It no longer looks like this layer is going under it. You, it now starts to look bubbly. So if you take, like I said, I just use, as, like I fill here. And then um, using Alt takes it down. And now this is no longer a visual story that looks like this right it now is very clearly a layer it drops down a layer and it reflects as such the other thing by doing the sk twist and then clay filling is i'm actually making that surface not flat but it kind of does this which gives you this nice reflective edge bright here this isn't sharp, this is actually a half round, so you're getting that linear half round reflection on the very edge. And so when you come to something metallic, you see how you're sort of getting a shadow there, it's starting to change the directionality because this is no longer reflecting at the same angle this is, so they do not associate with each other like this does. See, this is reflecting as a single plane. And once we've changed that, you now have this. Mm, boop. You have this kind of reflecting as a curve. You get that bright edge, but then it goes into a flat edge. So this isn't reflecting the same angle this is. So they look like two different surfaces. And you get much more visual complexity out of that. But you still retain the story that this is on top of this. And that is the key. Sculpt and light. Did that help? Yeah, yes. Thank awesome. you. Of course. All right. What's next? Um, model name starts with R. Is it Sina? Uh, no, it was in that folder. Go back. Go back. Sina is last. You should have one from. Oh, it was in its own folder. It was the one that was in its own folder, right? Hold on. Let's do this. Let's come here. Let's go. Yeah, worm. Back. Worm sand downloads there it is boop, boop. is that it yeah that's it aha uh -huh. all right so 
Do, 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 do. All right. Are they in chat or is it just? Uh... Yes, they are. Hello, hello. How are you doing? No, not bad at all. So let's actually. Hey, before you get started, can you go back in OBS and kick up um, desktop audio just a tad? Is it? Oh, desktop audio, not my desktop mic. No, oh, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Mm. Um, How's that? Put the volume on Twitch down as well, don't I? Yeah, I would just mute Twitch. Okay. And uh, know in advance that the you're going to hear what he's saying before you see what he's saying. It takes a second to adjust. Yeah, okay. there's a one, two, three, four, five, five second lag. Okay. All right. Okay, let's hide that. Boop. So it sound good for me? Yes, sir. Am I in? Sorry. Okay. So very cool. You kind of have a stony, sandwormy thing. Is yeah. it supposed to be a stone sort of skin feel? Um. Or a hard shell, you know? Yeah, hard shell. Yeah. The yeah. back is kind of like beetle inspired. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. difficult to penetrate. Yeah. No. But the mouth is like softer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like fibery. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of imagine like a, you know, it kind of comes in and out of the body. Yeah, like exactly. Here. It's like, yeah. Very cool. So the only place. So I think that, um, and I understand you have plates, right? Where, you know, it's not going back up and under so much. I think that at the ends or somewhere, I would still have a distinctive overlap. You know, once again, you hear me. Just cutting V's in, you lose surface continuity. And I think yeah, that... Yeah, I was having trouble with that. Yeah, I think that... Um, I'm just going to do this really quick. I'm just taking planer and filling in half that crack real quick. And you can see that just by removing, where's my brushes? I'm like, those are not my brushes. These are not my beautiful brushes. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Talking heads references, my bad. Um, So you can have it come in and then it is it is distinctly going under one another. Now you can find places, like let's say out here, it would make sense as it's bending, maybe you'll see the edge of the plate, but you probably don't want to lose it so much in here. I just think that there's a little bit of separation there that, you know, unless of course these are plates that are sitting on soft tissue that somewhere along the time it gaps and stuff but how you have it set up it distinctly looks like it's overlapping mm. um so you know if these are supposed to be distinct different plates but you know obviously ignore me um <laughs> i didn't really um didn't really decide on that whether they were distinctive or not to be honest yeah I, I, probably i should have done them as separate objects and then Oh, I, no. I just did it all with like clay brush and then yeah i just think that um as it's coming around i just you lose um some of the dynamics of it overlapping by getting that v in there and once again this you know this is a decision it's not necessarily this is right or wrong i'm just telling you what's going to be a little bit more dynamic as um, 
an object. Boop, boop, planner. Boop. Boop. Ouch. So. Uh, So if you look at, oh. you know, it's really funny you're adding parts to the side there. I never even considered that. Yeah, because that, once again, this is the story that one is going into the next one, right? Uh -huh. It's just these little visual identifiers of what's happening. Like I said, you know, that may not be what you're hunting for. So, I mean, you could just say, well, Tomas, that's not what I wanted. But I'm just trying to give us a consistent story here. So here you can see that these four plates, this one's going under that one, that one's going under that one, that one's going under that one. That's a very clear transitional story. And here, you know, this could be going under that one. That one you see a face on it, so it's definitely not actually going under it. This one has a reflective face here. So, and these are all lined there's nothing happening on the outside edge as far as that you're not defining that transition necessarily so just kind of think about it and decide what is the story you're trying to tell there right so it's not muddy because you're you're giving me the indicators that this is going under one another right you have a distinctive step here and that's this is a scale it slides on top of one another um, where if these were islands, you know, if it was more like plates that are sitting in soft tissue, you would wind up with something that would probably be a little bit more. And I'm just going to make a second plate here just so. Where it'd be something more in this vein where you, you're kind of showing some soft tissue between the hard plates and you know those become things that are sitting on the surface and you know you wouldn't necessarily have these big steps at that point does that make sense so you know just figure out the story that you're trying to tell if they are going under them make sure that they go under them and make sure that especially here on the side this is going under that's going under, going under, right? Where you can get the idea that these things are traveling on top of one another. And then if they're not, you know, what is happening there? Is it soft tissue? Is it, you know, when it straightens out, how is it sitting together? If there's no overlap, do these just butt together? If they start to pick up, but if they butt together here, is that increasing this up here? You know, how are you filling that stretch if they just butt together? So, you know, it's just, and it's just making a decision. There's no right or wrong. It's just make sure that you are telling a story and it's consistent, you know. Consistency is the only thing that matters. You know, it's like the universe can have any laws but you can't break the laws you set for it. If that makes any sense. Um, I'm noticing there's a lot of behavior difference between the orbs cracks brush that I have and the one that you have there. What's the difference between, what are the changes you've made to that if you don't mind me asking? No, oh, let's look. So my orb cracks, chances are it's my lazy step. Um, turn lazy mouse on. My lazy step is zero, zero, three. And then uh, lazy radius is one, lazy smooth zero, roll distance is 10. I, I changed my lazy step a lot to become really small, but it's different than zero. It's weird. And then I just turned lazy mouse off and it still retain. It just becomes a much smoother brush when you change the lazy steps I found. So it's a consistent step I make. 
um, or it's a consistent change I make um, with my brushes. Oh, yeah, that's a huge difference. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? it, it and what's funny is you turn lazy mouse off and you're like, oh, well, it's not working. No, it changes the, it just makes it a much smoother brush. Mm. Yeah, it does feel much smoother. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, determine your scaly transitions. Um, and, you know, once again, down here, these are looking like sort of like a snake belly, a little bit harder, but you know, it, it has that snake belly filling, which are the, once again, yeah. what's traveling over and what's under, right? Um, and this is where, you know, I think that, um, oops, nope, I don't know what I just did. I hate it when I change my focal shift accidentally. It's always a bummer. <laughs> you know, I think that, I don't know, where are we? Trim dynamic. Just knocking some of that lip off a little earlier. Knocking this edge back so it can go under that surface, right? Um, getting it just a little lower in the front because once again, mechanically, if that's going to drop behind that, it needs the tolerance to do so or it needs to be uh, uh, and sk twist gives you that little bright edge down there i was wondering when sk twist is going to come in everywhere there's a transition as far as i'm concerned <laughs> And you know, you can still like this isn't this doesn't necessarily have to go away, right? When I knock that off, I'm not saying that this facet has to go away. I would just say it should probably drop down a little more only because if you're going to have that facet and it's going to go, you know, if you're still implying that that's directionally going under, it just needs room to do so. I'm sorry, I'm one of those weird people where, like, I actually want uh, real science to dictate fantasy. <laughs> we, uh, I was the lead prop sculptor on um, Minority Report and initially so we sculpted all these different backpacks you know the jet packs and they actually had this guy from MIT who was the science consultant and Spielberg wanted the people to fly more like Superman than upright and so I'm sculpting these jet packs and there's a big air intake right here and then they want little jets coming out. And I'm like, so you want, first of all, you can't fly like Superman if you have a big air intake right there. They're like, why? And I'm like, okay, well, look, this is an air intake. What it does it? It sucks air. Okay, your head, when you're standing and you're going like this, okay, it's sucking air. Second, you fly like Superman, you do this, your head gets sucked into the air intake, it blocks it, and you fall out of the sky and die. And everyone's just like, boy, you're a buzzkill. <laughs> Everybody was like really angry at me. And then I was like, and also you're going to burn the backs of your calves off if you fly like Superman. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very unpopular in that meeting. I'm like, I, I mean, you, you hired a guy from MIT to talk about science. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying you're probably going to die if that's your case. <laughs> um, you know, I would just bring that down here if this step is something that you really aesthetically like and I do, it's nice, you know, it's not, no, but I think of uh, your science take to it rather than, yeah, I want it to look like it actually works. Yeah. And so you can see just even just smoothing that little lip out, smoothing that ridge out, you know, helps a great deal. Cause once again, when you're using the cut tools to develop those areas, you're getting that second reflective front. And that's what we try to avoid 
and that's where SK Twist is much better in cases like this because just by coming in knocking that back I mean I don't even really have to tell you that that's sitting on top of that right and you can just come in and flatten it but those lips are in the right place right you know, we can come way back here and you can tell that that's sitting on top of that and that's really tiny now right because you have that the reflection story is telling our story I don't know is my stream like the most boring stream in the world I really I do say the same things a lot don't I <laughs> like I'm probably the most boring person in the world to watch you need to use SK twist <laughs> S clear twelve. Sculpt in layers. Don't draw on your surfaces. If you ever get sick, I can probably replace you with a soundboard. Wow. <laughs> I just hit buttons that say SK twist. Clay tubes, <laughs> clay tubes, clay tubes. <laughs> wow. That doesn't show much for my future in education, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doomed. <laughs> I'm a yo gabba gabba soundboard. <laughs> I like to dance. I think, um, <laughs> yeah, the ZBrush videos are definitely really useful to watch. Learn so much from just watching yourself and other artists on here. And I'm glad. I mean, that's, it's funny. That's why it could sound stupid, but you know, that's why we, we do it. And it's nice that, cause I'll tell you, I, I never know. I feel like a pretty random individual sometimes as far as, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm spewing. At least I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes. Now, if it comes to my little ring sizing shortcut, that one's a tough one for me. <laughs> I don't always... demo that one. <laughs> well, I have a 50 50 chance. It's an excellent bit of process, but it's. Uh... 50-50 chance whether you're going to do it right or not. I know. I'm not very consistent. Well, I don't do it <laughs> enough to remember which one you push first. It's really just, well, that one day I couldn't get it to work at all, could I? Good gosh. Yeah. We'll let uh, Eric make that video. <laughs> it's so sad. When you sit down and it takes weeks to come up with, it's like, okay, this is a problem I have. And you're like, how am I going to make this work? And it took me weeks to figure it out. And I mean, to be fair, there's a video that shows you how to do most of it. But I didn't know that video existed. I didn't even know that I should try doing it that way. I, mean, I had to really kind of start at the very butt end of the process. And I get it. It's cool. It works. And I can't demo it to save my life. And I mean, I've been... It's been a few years and I still can't demo it to save my life. So I think that that, and you see how I resolve these going back up and under. Mm. So you have like that scoop transition so it makes sense as a layer. I think that's gonna help you a lot. And then I would I can't believe I'm actually going to say this. I would <laughs> actually remove some of the flatness of these because you have this very distinct stylized hard surface, right? And then these, these, because in my head, I, I see what it is. You know, it's the soft tissue thing. It's just like, you know, you know, I can feel it working um <laughs> but, out his grup, grup, isn't that it grup, grup. <laughs> like that. um you might let's just see if this does it let's just take inflate and let's give this a little it, bit it was more. hard trying to define how natural i wanted to make it look compared yeah. to making it look stylized with the rest of it yeah, oh, I'm not saying don't make it stylized. I think that 
you can see by inflate though i'm giving it some softness on the right. edging as opposed to it being the same texture as the stone yeah and and i mean i keep calling it stone but it just reminds me of sort of that stony hardy um chitin thank you chitinous chitin it's a good word is a good word i like it um have you ever read uh oh gosh what's his name orvin melville or melville um look that up. look up melville in october that's one of his books or the rail sea is another one of his books um any yeah thank you i'm like melville, melville i'm like losing it um he writes these really fantastic books that are it's sort of like sci-fi film noir so it's sort of this 40s sci-fi political you know it's sort of that pseudo-nazi pseudo-communism as they were both rising that sort of political upheaval sort of time frame mm. but it's weird beetles beetle people and bugs and this and uh right. <laughs> you know it's like sci-fi noir and then there's one uh set in paris right as the nazis sort of took occupation and all of these um artists so like uh these you know the dada um in the surrealist movement where they were doing the oh my gosh it's really going to be one of those nights isn't it um <laughs> seriously i keep trying to do it with other people and students um where you draw one thing and you fold it over exquisite corpse holy hannah that was painful um these exquisite corpses and they like come to life and they attack the park and it's just this what is going on it's crazy it's but he's a damn good writer it it Crichton, kite chitin always reminds me of uh his writing <laughs> Wow, that was a really roundabout statement there. I'll have to uh, pick up some of his books. Oh, he's he's a really good writer. I wish he was faster. I'm ready for a new book. But um, there's sort of there's two trilogies, and they're maybe great. I've got, maybe I've got the wrong person. Then actually, this is a an American novelist from 1891. <laughs> No, 1890, oh, 1891. Not there. No, 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 it's, no. Um, Come on. Uh, Name one of the books. October, Rail Sea. China Mount. China, China. My, May, Mayville. Um, he's... He's a complete badass. He's a great writer. Uh, he's British. Yeah. As well. And uh, hold on, let's see. No, not October. Let's. I can't believe I've. Well, I'm not even gonna say it. It's like I can't believe I remember forgot his first name. Books. Should be able to see it from the cover. Uh, yeah see the Krobazan trilogy that's really he's very famous for that I mean that's his uh, Embassy Town is a fantastic book I'm trying to find the name of the one of the one in uh, set in Paris tell you what you mean now. there's a really interesting image here uh is it a Perdido Street Station Plaza of Statues? Yeah. 
and it's like a kind of like insecty. Yeah, that's that's people. The, yeah, I don't know. Weird. <laughs> yeah, no. As I say, it's sort of like film noir with bugs. It's awesome. Oh, I can't find it. I could look in my Audible library. It's there, but. I think this is the best thing about the stream so far. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you haven't shared a damn thing that's interested me, but this dude rocks. <laughs> but, you know, there's sort of like these weird detective stories, but they have bugs and alternate dimensions and, you know, weird unions. And, you know, it's he's tied into that whole communist uprising time period and... Um, yeah, it's just, it's really quite fascinating. And October is actually a, a really interesting book because it's about, you know, the rise of communism. And But it's his take on it. So you have a, a film noir, bug, sci-fi writer writing history. It's it's pretty awesome. He's, he's great. It sounds awesome. Yeah, and he has a great sense of humor. And he's really, he's smart. And I love it that he doesn't write down to the audience, you know, because let's face it, your average American has what, like a third grade reading capacity these days. And I mean, he's just like, I'm going to throw stuff out. And if you don't know anything about this time period history or anything, you know, my books are still enjoyable. But, you know, he's a very savvy writer. He's awesome. So you can see by just softening these edges up, we've changed this story from this story where these are a little bit more um mm. it's soft. such a simple change as well isn't it it's like... right where if you look on this side see how these are sharp flat surfaces mm. i know i can't i i just spent the entire evening telling people not to do this but uh i think that in this case um, and it's not a jewelry piece well, even if it were a jewelry piece, I think that contrast in your stylization is helpful because that's what allows you to separate the surfaces and separate the ideas. You know, because once again, if you're here, you know, this is still a pretty facety organic form, right? Where if we knock the facets off and we give it a little bit of roundness. I get into the habit of um, dynameshing with clay polish too often, I think. Oh, that'll do it, yeah. But, I do I mean, have a question regarding scale. Uh -huh. I don't know if I should ask now or... Um, originally this was imported in millimeters, mm -hmm. um, somewhere down the line, I'm not sure how it's completely it, lost its scale. Yeah. It turns um, into three and two mil. <laughs> yeah. Um, and over time, I mean, I don't know why that's happened. Um, but there are other times as well where I'm trying to duplicate a subtool, but it will duplicate it, but it will be really, really tiny compared to the original. You know, there's so there's so many weird things that can happen. It's hard to tell what happened unless I actually saw your, yeah. and I'm not saying, Oh, unless I saw the button, but unless I knew what you were doing, um, that becomes really hard. But uh, like I say, turn off this all button, but this is where this all button actually could be quite wonderful. And that is, um, let's say, you know, that you want this to be, you know, 120 mil. Right, you know. So we we know that. Well, we don't know that. Hold on, let me make sure. I say we know, but this uh, says y is the lowest. Okay, well that's the y-axis. So you just go one twenty. Enter. And but you're just on that one tiny little sub tool. I, I know. Okay. You come up here and push all. And then you goes. Then you go resize subtool, and it will take everybody. Oh no! Don't be doing that to me. 
something is hidden, I guess. It's just saying it wants to see me. Sorry, my uh, no, subtle no. management is awful. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> At least you labeled the folders like I told you to. <laughs> Tell everyone. Reese. Uh oh. What's hidden? Oh, 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 hidden. Ah, yeah, crap. Is it this one? Show part. Which one did it say it was? Hold on, let's try that. Uh, one. Subtle spindle. Spindle. So it's one of these. Uh, show part. I think that was it. Sorry, I didn't. Um, oh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, oh, there we go. It's show part. Okay, I think that'll do it. Resize up tool. Yeah, previously I was trying to T pose mesh it, resize it, and then extract it. But that's, obviously, it's, you can't get the exact measurements like that yeah, no. either. You're not supposed to be getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, maybe we Actually, the rocks don't really matter. They're from another project, but I can resize them later anyway. So. Yeah, it's started. Right. It's going to do its thing. Give it a second. It won't take long. I don't know how much time I have. One of the things I wanted to ask you was Sorry. Just for like um how you might consider doing some sand or something spraying out of the ground where it's come up out of the ground mm -hmm. i don't know if you can do that or not or have time yeah, or yeah. Just... sure 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 there we go and now we go sliders to sub tool and y is 215 oh because we have the other things on so yeah that's so it resized everything and now you are at let's hide this crap not that this crap it up to. <laughs> that's just um scale master yep sliders the sub tool oh slide so sliders sub tool this is why i also have update size ratios because sliders the sub tool, even if things are hidden, it consider it it is it's measuring the scene as one bounding box. Where if we take this, we go update size ratios, and you can see it's like one eighty nine. So, yeah, it resized everything to whatever I told it that height was. And so now you are no longer three millimeters. Now you're one hundred and one hundred fifty nine millimeters or whatever. Right. So, so should... particle sand. Um... So I'll just confirm. So I should set the scene scale first and then using the hit all and then update size ratios yep. after that. Okay. So we get here. Let's just hop right here. This has. No, let's hop right here because this is one piece. Frame. Sliders to sub tool. And you can see this is one millimeter and four millimeters tall, right? So obviously, in here, we're going to turn the star on as well. Uh -oh. What are you doing? Stop. I don't even know what you're doing. Stop it. So we're going to turn the star on as well. There's the star. We just go sliders to subtool. That's our size. Turn on all. I want this to be... 20 millimeters so we're going to push 20 push enter it resizes everybody and now we go resize subtool with the all and r button selected boop and now it goes through its whole thing moves the star stars same scale to it and now it is sliders to subtool 20 millimeters tall and you can do this so let's say this is your star 
Mm. Slider's the sub tool. I do not want everybody, right? Turn all off. And let's say I want the star, see it's 0.88 wide, but I want the star to be, um, well, let's Z axis, right? So it's 0.25. I want the star to actually be a square, right? I want it to be the same size in all directions. So I'm gonna turn R off. I'm gonna come in here and go five, 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 enter, resize subtool, make sure R is off. Boop. Yeah, 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 okay, whatever. What are you doing, nut job? Okay, let's undo that. For some reason, um, sometimes it wigs out when you go over 100, and I don't know why it's saying that it's um, going to go over 100, but enter. Sliders to resize subtool. There you go. And so now you can see that the star is um, a square, right? So if you just want to change it one direction, just turn R off and change it to what it is, and that's fine. All but right. so there you go. That's how you do that. Let's come here. Now, particles um now are you going to are you going to try to print it so you want them to be together or is this just for a graphic and it doesn't matter uh yeah this will be for printing okay so that's much harder uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so probably what i would do is um and maybe this is something, you know what? Are, are you? Will you be around next Monday? Um, yeah, I can be definitely. Okay, come by next Monday, and because this is one of those things where I did this for a while, and it's really cool, and it works, and it's really neat, but I haven't opened it in like two and a half, three years, so um, I need to sit down and futz with it a little. Sure. And uh, it's really, it's a neat system. It works pretty well. It's pretty cool. Uh, I just need to sit there and futz with it a little because I can't even remember what some of the tools are called. I just have to go back and look at a couple of my models and that'll show me how I did it. So if Henry will remind me to do particle cloud <laughs> um, uh, I will put it together and I'll show you how it works and it's nice it's neat it works well yes sounds amazing thank you right on have any other questions um probably no probably not at this stage really okay I mean, yeah just um cool cool no just just about the scale and the sand really um but you've given me some really good i you know good sort of hints and tips there about the flow and how should yeah. you follow things and so on so thank you right on no problem at all all right all right who's next henry Perfect. Thank cena you very much. last one whoop, whoop. all right so and cena has two right uh yeah they are of the same um sculpture i think one's a block up and one's a little bit more complete okay and then this is the, okay this one's a little farther along <clears throat> oh cena um did the the sword and the or the spear with the dry is that yeah i think that was them from uh quite a few weeks ago yeah 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 yes S sorry i get i get name blur i have no idea i'm <laughs> the shapes are reminiscent that's why isn't it funny I, I'll remember your shapes but <laughs> I can't remember my own name alright are you here 
Uh, not via voice. Okay. They will be in chat. Um, oh, they sent a they sent a newer version. Now, if you want to download it, I don't know if it's getting too late. I can give it a quick shot. What time is it? Uh, it's almost 240. three. It's almost okay. three. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, let me. This will definitely be the last one. Yeah. Don't be a quitter. I'm gonna have you're stuff like, to do. You're like, screw you! I have a real job, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have a space mouse, and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, see sword look at that we were ahead of the curve on that one <sighs> see now you started that I blame you Henry I didn't yawn. <laughs> Blaming you anyway. All right. Holy Hannah, you got lots of pieces. Um. All right. Let's turn that off. I would say if you're going to have sculptural elements, punch them because you know you're hard surfacing. And then you have a handful of these um, moments. And obviously, me being a sculptor, I like the sculptural moments. But don't let them. And I think that they became much more, they became softer when you pinched everything together. Because wasn't this all pretty thick at one point? Yeah. OK, I'm not hallucinating here. And so I would definitely. Uh, What's our resolution? It's pretty low, but let's give it a shot and see if we can get. <clears throat> okay, I need a little bit more geo than that. I'm like, why is that the? Because I was doing that hair. So if you're going to use sculptural elements, don't be afraid to make them sculptural. And then just come back SK trim and you can flat that out as much as you want and keep your hard surfacing going. Mm -hmm. So weird, I've been, my little humming has been, turns into like that Adele song. Cause I was like, <laughs> it's like, da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm like, wait, where is that coming from? I'm like, that's not in my head. <laughs> I'm like, when's the last time I heard that song? That was bizarro. I mean, I could have weirder songs in my head for sure, but I'm just like. <laughs> I'm just so bummed for like. Oh, it had to be seven or eight months. I didn't get busted listening to Antennae on my uh, stream, so. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, my stream started getting blocked. You know, like the audio was just like, oh, mm -hmm. oh that's <laughs> no fair. 
<laughs> How did you all find out I was playing your music? Robots. I know. And Twitch really started cracking down on that recently. And it sucks because it's just like, well, I mean, I understand it for the artist. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying it's just such good music to work to. <laughs> <laughs> Like, can I contact his agent and say, hey, man, <laughs> I'm just a sculptor. Give me a break. You can. <laughs> it might not work, but you can. Yeah, I have this odd feeling that's not going to fly. I could trade him jewelry for music rights, right? So how does that work? Like, if I got the right to use his music or anyone's, you know, um, how does the the robot know that you have the right to use it? Uh, the robot assumes you do not have the right to use it. Uh, the publisher can approve you for use. But then how would the robot then know that? You know what I mean? It's like, does it at some point talk to the publisher to find out if you do? Or is it kind still of. Going... I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it works on Twitch. I know how it works on YouTube. But it's more of a... The robot alerts the publisher that this is happening. Uh, and the publisher can either say... Completely take it down. Leave it up, but give me all their money. Or I don't care, they're allowed to use it. Oh, I see. Because all they did was... Um, they just silenced the time when the song was on. Mm -hmm. Right, like my sound drops out, so they can't. Yeah, hear in what a I'm recording. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I think the publisher can then go back in and say, "No, he was allowed to do this, and your audio would return." Oh, okay. So I guess all I'm saying here is if you're going to get sculptural do so i better not do that i'm going to get nailed and they're going to silence my video <laughs> you're not allowed to hum <laughs> I know where I heard that song. Isn't that funny? So Lee watches football. And the other day I sat and watched uh, some of the Kansas City game with her. And they had, I was marveling at how contemporary artists refuse to use their names. The guy who has the Super Bowl um, halftime is the weekend and I'm like okay we had the artist formerly known as Prince and the weekend and I don't know what made me think about it and I thought I remembered that he was like a YouTube celebrity right he came from YouTube it's not like he came through the normal yeah, I don't know anything about him. Yeah, so, well, I, I just remember hearing that. And I was like, oh, is that true? And then it was, yes, it is true. And, uh, I mean, it's just the music industry is, I mean, they've got to be wigging out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, just the sense of, like, whoa. It has, like. Uh, so Cena wants to know, uh, FYI, this is a model for a game. Sure. Um, is the, is there anything wrong with the sharpness of the blade? No, not at all. Nope. That'll read beautifully. I mean, you know, it's sharp. It's fine. I would just say, come in, you know, you have some sculptural elements there. Just come in and make sure that you, 
at least tie it to something so it doesn't just look like block shapes. And I know this isn't done, so you very likely will and have a plan. But that's the thing that I would... Um, worry about more than because I mean that blade's going to read sharp you know it is an edge and you have a scoop to it so you're going to get a nice reflective um, surface on it right I mean that blade's going to read right you're getting play on the blade so you're going to have a bright highlight on one and um, a good shadow on the other Yeah, no, that's, that'll read totally fine. Indubitably. Shoot, shoot. Nope. I think that would be perfectly nice. But like I said, I think that getting in and getting some sculptural elements in there because it is very sculptural I think is going to read much better much better is that all you wanted to know because yeah you got that part killed I mean that reads fine Right, it darkens there, it highlights there. Same on the other. You get a little curve to it. The light rides along the blade. See, like there. So no, that'll, that'll read fine. Cool. They do have one more question. I don't know what it is yet. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nope, that was it. You got your last question in there. See, when you just use the block shapes, it just seems... I mean, look at how dynamic and nice the blade is, and just the rest of it reflects as one surface. That's my only... That's my only get with it. But, once again, if it's for a game, you're baking textures into it and all of that, so... Yeah, you're probably right. So what is that last question, my friend? We're waiting. Find out soon. Oh, uh, I create the sharp edges with flatten. How can I create them with trim adaptive or something like that? Uh, well, I, I mean, your edges are looking fine. I, I don't use trim adaptive. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that I've ever even opened it or touched it. It might be a wonderful tool. I don't know. Um, but like on this, I, I mean, SK trim, and I just use SK trim on everything because it really leaves nice, sharp, crisp edges, right? Like if we go here and kind of come along, you can see that it's sharpening the edge. It's not really rolling over the edge. So that's, that sort of does it for me. So I haven't really gone out and hunted for other tools. But does that make sense? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I think SK trim might be the might be the answer. Yeah, I don't. But I I think that flattening is is working out great already. Yeah, no, it looks good. You're doing great. I think that, like I said, the the only thing that I like about SK trim as opposed to flattening and the others is that no escape. I don't want to save all these. Um, is when you get into like areas like this it, it got a huge brush sorry <laughs> is that it'll retain the crispness right you can see that it creates sharp edges as opposed to rolling over them and if you're not careful with flatten and some of the other uh, surfacing you don't get that crisp edge that you can get off of the the sk trim polish right. 
Já. Ó. Oh. Ó. Oh. Ó. Oh. <laughs> It's really tragic when I have time to make weird puffy faces and then look up and see myself make the weird puffy faces. Yeah, very unfortunate. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. The the last question was the, does a professional use flatten? Uh, and I said a professional uses whatever works for them. Yeah, no, I mean that's sure. I'm sure there are plenty of professionals that use flatten. I mean, I mean I have it. Don't I have it in my thing? Yeah, I use yeah. it. See, it's right. Yeah, there. you use it. All the time. Yeah, it's so, really I mean, hard, like ninety degree edge off of something. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I like flatten. It's just SK trim polish. With flatten, though, if you're not careful, you can roll over an edge, right? And what I mean by rolling over edges is like we're down here and I'm trying to keep this flat. Sometimes you can see how it's really aggressive on that corner. As I come up to it, I can roll over the edge. SK trim doesn't really do that. See, it stops at the crease. It respects those edges. So um, I find that I use that because I'm sloppy sometimes and I will roll over my edges. <laughs> and that's really frustrating. I mean, you know, this is flatten and, you know, it works good. No, I, there's flatten's a good tool. Yep. I like it. I like flatten and I cannot lie. <laughs> Another brother might deny. <laughs> All right. It's late, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I did just do that. Yeah, <laughs> it might be late. <laughs> all right. That's all the files. All right. <sighs> all right. I'm trying to figure out, oh my gosh, my scroll stopped at Michelangelo. <laughs> oh goodness, your scroll wants to remind you, no, <laughs> don't punish me, <laughs> don't do it again. Oh, you loved it, you no. loved it, it was a very educational thing, you adored it, I know. Once, just once though. I didn't even get into some of the good ones, he has some really good ones. So, you're like, what are you thinking? We, we need to talk about what good means to you. That it's a good example. It makes me laugh. <laughs> wow, my, my camera's focusing on my microphone. Come on, follow the focus ding dong. No, it's not going to do it, is it? <laughs> oh there it is okay so <clears throat> it looks like that's it for this week and I will see you next week same time same place join the discord if you haven't already uh, Tomas has a teaching platform if you want to learn these skills yourself in step by step tutorials yes I am we do have a website link I'm really a horrible self-promoter, aren't I? Oh, uh, yeah, you are. Shane's really good at it. How how come all these people are really good at it? They're like, and subscribe now. And yeah, I don't, I'm... Because they think about it. And we uh, just don't, you know, we want we want you all to live your best life. And if that's on Zebra's Jewelry Workshop, then uh, awesome. Yay. <laughs> if it's not... Then join our Discord. You can still Where? ask questions, post your work, chat with people. For now. No. <laughs> okay, kind and gentle folk. Another day has come to its end. And, well, I guess technically to its beginning. But um, 
we are wrapping up. I will do crits again next week. So basically what I've been figuring is because once we get back in the role, we had like right before I, my computer blew up, we had like 45 people uh, put up crits. And I was like, well, you know what? It seems that people need crits. So I will critique as long as there are models to critique. And then if not, um, I will sculpt. And so there we are. I will see you next week. If you have models that you would like to submit, it is, uh, Henry will put it up there, Z http forward slash forward slash semicolon z bru dot sh forward slash tsw um, let's make that as confusing as possible <laughs> i'm working on it <laughs> it's like everybody can follow that i'm pretty sure z bush um thank you pixelogic thanks everyone for being here thank you henry for being my eyes on the list and the person who's actually organized and will stop me from looking at Michelangelo statues. Um, join us at ZBrush Jewelry Workshops if you need something. There's some free videos there as well for ZBrush Core and ZBrush Mini that Eric's been making that are very helpful. Um, And that's all I got. I think that's it. That's it. The, that, 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 that's all, folks. Uh, yeah. So now I will do my regular signing off. Thanks, ZBrush. Thanks, Pixelogic. Thank you, everyone. Um, see you next Monday. And now I just have to go to OBS. Now you have to say, where's the button? How do I, How do I turn this off? <laughs> How do I stop this thing? <laughs> all right. Have a great week. See you next week.